the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Sports Channel presents Miami Hurricanes football. Tonight, the Hurricanes go for their third straight win as they battle the Arkansas State Indians. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Forge. I'll be telling you what's happening on the field. My partner, former University of Pittsburgh and CFL quarterback John Congemi, will tell you why. John, the last couple weeks, the Canes have really gotten the running game going. They said before the year, tailback was their deepest position. Well, they've needed that depth, and everybody that's played there has come through. Miami's had outstanding production in that running back position. It all starts with number five, Edron James. He's been the leader in the backfield during se seven games this season. 675 yards, and he's averaging 5.6 yards every time he touches the football. Add to that eight touchdowns. He's got power and speed, Frank. That's what makes him so electrifying. He can break a game wide open with one run, but it takes two or three guys to take him down to boot, so it's a tough guy. And then on the other side, when you get the changeup, you get number 21, James Jackson. Last week, 187 yards and one touchdown, including a 74-yard run against the Owls. So, you know, one-two punch, you're not dying when you get number five out of the game. You still got to rest up for number 21. Definitely. The Hurricanes have been going with true freshman wide receivers. They've been good, but they've got a tight end who's potentially great. Daniel Franks had over 100 yards receiving against Temple. A quarterback week. stream at the tight end position, 6'6", 240 pounds. Last week against Temple, 110 yards and one touchdown. Really dominated the middle of the football field, and he's only going to get better. He's a freshman. He's getting more experience. They're going to have to look to him in the la later part of the season, coming up in tough Big East games. On defense, the Hurricanes had their best effort in quite a while last week. All 15 Temple points came after turnovers and young linebackers getting battle tested. Nate Webster, the freshman out of Miami Northwestern High School, coming back after the dislocated elbow and played well last week. Yeah, was hurt against Arizona State. Six total tackles in his first appearance back in the Orange Bowl last week and does a great job of running sideline to sideline. Gives Miami terrific speed at the middle linebacker position. But then you take that, look over his shoulder. He's got another freshman, number 44, Dan Morgan. He's led the team the last three games in total tackles. Just does a terrific job with his speed. He was a running back in high school, comes back, he's got terrific instinct on defense, does a great job as a compliment to the middle linebacker position. And for the offenses today, both quarterbacks, Ryan Clement is a senior, Cleo Lemon for Arkansas State is a freshman. Cleo Lemon, the freshman, only 49 completions on 109 attempts. He'll have a tough time throwing the football against this Hurricane defense, but I expect Ryan Clement to really pick up on the last two ball games, especially the BC Temple game, a lot of confidence in his tight end. He's looked much sharper, and the Hurricanes, they're still not a good football team. They want to get better. It's the opening kickoff between Arkansas State and Miami coming up next. University of Miami football is being brought to you in part by Heineken, true to the original recipe since 1886. By Bell South, nobody knows a neighbor like a neighbor. By Office Depot, taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. And by your local Nissan retailers who remind you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. What if you can reduce your stress at work right now? What is the matter with you today? Relax. We got to get it done now. Breathe. Think, Herschel. Just think. Meditate. I you all the time. I know you can do it. Stress. You got to get it done. Relax. What if you got two hands? Use Make them. friends. Herschel, you know I love you. What if you can learn from stress or tackle it? What is the matter with you today? I love you too, Coach. Take it from Terry Crisp. There are a lot of reasons why I drive a Land Rover from Dimmit Land Rover in Clearwater. They're totally engineered to be rugged and powerful to take you anywhere you want to go. Land Rover is also the safest, most luxurious of all the sport utility vehicles. Best of all, they actually cost less than other comparable models. Take a test drive with my good friends at Dimmit Land Rover in Clearwater, and you'll know why I got one. Tell them Terry sent you. You'll get a better deal, eh? Ready for the opening kickoff here at the Orange Bowl between the 1-7 and seven Arkansas State Indians and the Miami Hurricanes trying to get back up to 500 at 4-4. Four and four. Frank Fort, John Congemi with you on Sports Channel. This is the first meeting between Arkansas State and the University of Miami, 0-0 zero and zero in the series. And, of course, uh, Arkansas State just recently moved up to uh, Division 1A. The weather today, a very nice 85 degrees, 65% percent humidity, winds out of the southwest at 15 miles per hour. And the forecast is for partly sunny. The skies right now around the stadium, as we look, are clear. Getting ready to kick off, number 28, Andy McPherson, 
Jeff Popovich and Santana Moss will be the deep receivers standing at the Miami five-yard line. Miami won the toss and chose to receive. The kick goes to Santana Moss at the goal line. Moss following Popovich across the 30 and run out of bounds about the 36-yard line. Number 55, Jeremy Miller made the tackle. 35-yard return for Santana Moss as we get a look at senior quarterback Ryan Clement. Currently ranked sixth in completions and passing yards in his University of Miami career. Hurricanes will begin first and 10 at the 35-yard line is where they marked Santana Moss out on the kickoff return. Miami begins with Edger and James and Carlo Joseph in the backfield behind Ryan Clement. Clement's first pass, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by number 21, Chappelle Mitchell. Well, just a terrible start for the Hurricanes and pushing and shoving between Robert Sampson and a couple of the Indians. Chappelle Mitchell making his first interception of the year, the junior out of Russellville, Arkansas, and the Indians will have it first and 10 at the Miami 26. Chappelle Mitchell did a terrific job of coming down with the motion, and then you'll see the receiver come in and then back out. You see right there, number one, Jones comes back in and out, but Chappelle doesn't go under the bite. He just stays at home and cuts right in front of the freshman wide receiver. Clement didn't see him. It results as a big turnover for the Indians. First and 10 inside the Miami 30-yard line. Austin Tinsley is the starting tailback. And Cleo Lemon on first down will tuck it under. And fumbles the football. Picked up by Dwayne Starks. Starks up the sideline, and he stepped out back at the Miami 35. So turnovers on consecutive plays. A 10-yard return for Dwayne Starks on the fumble recovery, and Miami has the football right back. Yeah, Cleo Lemon gives it right back to Ryan Clement on offense. They get a chance with terrific field position. He looks like he just got the ball stripped from him as he was going up the middle to try to make a big play for the Indians. He just, after play action, trying to go to his tight end, Teat, down the middle, didn't see him clear the linebackers, and there it is right there. It looked like Lewis, number 92, got a hand on it from behind. Bounces right up to number 23, Dwayne Starks, and he goes up the Miami sideline, stepped out of bounds on the 25-yard line, but a huge play for this Miami defense. Well, very strange beginning here at the Orange Bowl. Back-to-back -back turnovers on consecutive plays, so we'll start over again, Miami at their 25. This time to give to Edger and James. Probably a better idea, although he's only going to get three yards. Before the Indians drag him down, it'll bring up a second and seven. Clarence Williams, number 90, in on the tackle. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. The two freshman wide receivers, Daryl Jones, Reggie Wayne, both true freshmen. Bubba Franks, the tight end, is a redshirt freshman. Joseph and James in the backfield. He retooled offensive line because of all the injuries, and they've done a great job the past couple of weeks. Robert Sampson, uh, Carlos Callejas, Mike Wayner, Ty Wise, and Curlin Blaze. There is a timeout on the field as they reset the 25-second clock. And we'll get to the Arkansas State defense in just a moment. Butch Davis, in his third year as Miami head coach, trying to get his team back to the 500 mark. Second and seven for the Canes. A minute gone here in the first quarter at the Orange Bowl. Clement to throw again. This time has an open Carlo Joseph at the 30. Cannot get away from Rodney Allen, who takes him down after a pickup of four. And it'll bring up third and about three for Miami. Nice open field tackle by number 27, Rodney Allen. He's a junior. He's only 5'8", 165 pounds. He's going up against Carlo Joseph, who goes at 226 pounds. But Carlo did have his, his shoulder and his head turned back to the quarterback. Just a flare out to the wide side of the football field. Ryan didn't like the downfield progression. Dumps it off to his fullback in the flat, but a terrific open field tackle by Allen. Allen. Third and three for Miami. A little bit more than three. They have to reach the 35-yard line. They'll try it with Edger and James. Good job following his blockers. Has first down yardage up to the 38-yard line. Rodney Allen, the cornerback, making the tackle. But a first down for Miami as Edger and James picked up six. Yeah, credit Ty Wise coming out from that left guard position on the pool. Did a nice job. And also Edger and James, good patience in the backfield, Frank. Let's take a look at the starting defense for... Arkansas State, Clarence Williams the third. His nickname ought to be Mod Squad. That's right. Kwanzi Thomas is their best player at defensive tackle. The linebackers, Sagoon Ajigbeda is their leading tackler, a freshman out of Atlanta, and the defensive backs. The Mitchell brothers highlight that group. First and 10 for Miami at their own 38. And again, it's James. Tries to bounce it outside. Gets away from one, but cannot get away again, and he'll lose two. 
Chappelle Mitchell coming up to make the tackle. As the Arkansas State defense fired up here in the early going, a unit that has given up plenty of yards and plenty of points. And Miami with back-to-back 300-yard -back rushing games, they'd love to get that going again. Yeah, we talk about the freshman linebackers for Miami. Ajabeta, the middle linebacker for Arkansas State, did a good job of coming in and making a hit. Chappelle Mitchell and Sean Mitchell are brothers in the secondary. On second and 12 for Miami. Again, it's Carlo Joseph, the fullback, wide open at the 40, picks up a block from Daryl Jones and is run out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Again, Rodney Allen, number 27, the junior out of Little Rock, making the tackle, but a pickup of close to 10, and it'll bring up third and short. Carlo's been big in the pass game this, this season, Frank. He has 11 catches now for over 120 yards on the season and two touchdowns. So not only his blocking has enabled Edger and James and James Jackson some running room, but his catching ability has made it easier for Ryan Clement to use a lot of people in that pass offense. Two catches for 12 yards for Carlo Joseph in the early going here in the first quarter. Scoreless at the Orange Bowl. On third down, it's Edger and James. Finds a hole across midfield. And Edger and James almost broke it. All down at the Arkansas State 45-yard line. A saving tackle from Denisho Blanchett, the strong safety. I see both backs from Miami today, Edron James and James Jackson, when we do see him later in the ball game, breaking a lot of arm tackles. The Arkansas State team, not a lot of depth and, and very light in the pants. A lot of guys, 100, uh, 180 pounds, 230 pounds. A lot of guys that are going to have to come up and gang tackle Edron James or he'll run right through those tackles. First and 10 at the Arkansas State 45. Miami's second possession. They threw an interception on the first, but Arkansas State fumbled it right back. Edger and James again with the football. Edger and down the sideline, finally bumped out at the Arkansas State 27-yard line. Waldell Harp, number eight, out of Orlando, Florida, making the tackle, but a nice pickup by Edger in 18 yards and a Canes first down. Occasionally, he'll show you that power, but he likes to show you that little stutter step and speed to the outside. Really nothing in the middle. Nice job walling off the end of the line of the Indians, and then James James burst outside off left tackle. Just shows you his speed and balance on the perimeter. Does a nice job. He, just when you think you've got him, he turns it into another gear, and he can make it go. Edger and James two weeks ago, 271 yards against Boston College, a school and Big East record. Daryl Jones in motion on first down. Trap play. James picking his way through across the 20-yard line. Lavelle Alexander, the linebacker, making the tackle, but a gain of eight on first down. Yeah, you can see a lot of Indians just bouncing off a of number five this afternoon, and Ryan Clement should, should have an easy day turning around and handing the ball off to Edron James. You see, nice line play, good block by the fullback, and a little depth in the backfield, and, and Carlo Joseph take care, takes care of that. Now it's all number five going north and south inside the Indian 20-yard line. Already Edron James, six carries for 42 yards, second and two for the Hurricanes. Inside the Indian 20. Again, it's James following Carlo Joseph. He'll just pick up what he can. He has first down yardage before he is swarmed under by the Arkansas State defense, but Miami will move the chains. McQuanzy Thomas in on the tackle, and it'll be first down for the Canes. So the Canes going back to their methodical approach, John, after the early turnover. Well, they had great line play the last two weeks, and that offensive line all season's been makeshift. A lot of guys playing different positions. They really dominated B.C., and Temple up front, the offensive line has done a great job, and Art Kehoe and Butch Davis on the sidelines has to be pleased with the production of those guys playing different positions. First and 10 Hurricanes at the Arkansas State 17. Carlo Joseph, the fullback in motion. And Clement will just swing it out to Edger and James at the 20. James cuts back. James lost the football. Still scrambling, and Arkansas State has it at their one yard line. Number one, Cornelius Cleary, the safety, coming up with Miami's second turnover of the day. Yeah, Cleary, man on the spot for the Indians inside the five-yard line, actually picking up the fumble at the one, matching his jersey number, did a nice job of keeping the play alive. Ryan Clement wanted to go to his, two tight, to his tight end and back, saw that the Arkansas State defenders had that well defended, then dumps the football off. I think this is a case of just trying to make too much out of a play. Great strip from behind. It looked like one of the linebackers had a great strip from behind, and Edron didn't hold on to the football, didn't secure it inside the five-yard line, and the Miami Hurricanes turned the ball over twice in this first quarter. Cleo Lemon, the quarterback, keeps the football and got pretty much nothing there as the middle of the defensive line closed him down, Damian Lewis and company. And just trying to get some breathing room, there's a good look at Damian Lewis, the freshman out of Sulphur Spring, Texas. Miami coaches believe he is a star in the making. Cleo Lemon, the quarterback, 
185 freshman from Greenwood, Mississippi, and there are his numbers on the year. Both the uh, first team tailbacks for Arkansas State, both Lamont Zachary and Alistair Couch are not here. Zachary had a death in the family. Couch has been suspended. Austin Tinsley is the starting tailback. Second and nine for the Indians. Lemon gives it to the fullback. And Walker, Jaquise Walker, comes up across the six-yard line. Cliff Jackson, the middle linebacker, making the tackle. will bring up third and about five. Yeah, initially it looked like Cliff lost the fullback. That time picked it up. Kid, it looked down at ground level. These two offense and defensive lines. Miami really doing a nice job penetrating on the outside. But you see the, the fullback, Walker, number 39, just cuts it in inside the uh, right tackle, pushes forward outside the five-yard line. Miami, big third down stand here, Frank. They can get the football back for their offense. They're running, they're moving the football on offense with ease. They're just turning it over early in this football game. And kind of a ragged start for the Hurricanes. Two turnovers, third down and a short five. Lemon over the middle pass is dropped by the tight end, Ron T. And that'll bring up a punting situation. Michael Smith had the coverage, and Matt Sweeney had dropped off from defensive end also to get in the passing lane. 8.53 left to go first quarter. Hey, by the way, we mentioned Miami fumbling the ball, Edger and James. They fumbled it 17 times this year, but had lost only two fumbles of those 17 prior to James coughing it up at the one-yard line. Scott Simons is the punter, standing in his end zone. And the Hurricanes have not blocked the punt this year, which was one of their trademarks the past two seasons. Wayne Starks back to receive the kick. Simons gets it away. Short kick. Starks at the 47. Starks cuts inside and gets across the 40 to the Arkansas State 38-yard line. Number six, Denisho Blanchett making the tackle. A 40-yard punt and a nine-yard return for Dwayne Starks. 8.41 left to go first quarter here at the Orange Bowl. And we are still scoreless. Three turnovers, two by the Canes, one by Arkansas State so far. Frank, it doesn't look like Arkansas State's going to be able to move the football through the air against this Miami defense. And up front, they don't match up real well with Miami's defensive front. So look for the defense really to give the offense, as they're doing here, terrific field position starting inside the 40-yard line at the uh, Indian 39. Single back offense now. Edger and James behind Clement. Santana Moss in motion. Reverse coming to Moss. That was smelled out by Williams, but Moss got away. And Moss may go. Santana Moss inside the 20. Great move at the 15-yard line. And Santana Moss with a 39-yard touchdown run. His first touchdown as a collegiate player. Wow, did Santana Moss set up Rodney Allen, the cornerback, number 27, around the 20-yard line. Made a fake to his left and just cut it back against the grain. Terrific reverse. First, he comes back in the backfield. Clarence Williams had him. Number 90 escapes that tackle. Take a look at the top of your screen on defense in red. Number 90 for the Indians, Williams. He's in perfect position, but Moss just goes underneath him, misses the arm tackle, terrific blocks down the field by wide receivers. Now watch him set up Allen right here. He cuts across the grain, does a great job at the 20, in for the Hurricane score. Andy Crossland out of the Jeff Popovich hold is good on the extra point. 20 of 22 on conversions now for Andy Crossland, the sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. And with 8 minutes and 28 seconds left to go first quarter, the Canes draw first blood. It's Miami 7, Arkansas State nothing. We'll be right back here on Sports Channel. Kiplinger's best new car. The winner is Malibu. AAA's top car award. The winner is Malibu. 1997's car of the year. The winner is Malibu. At $199 per month, the winner is you. Chevy Malibu. The car you knew America could build. Genuine Chevrolet. Show me a business that uses office supplies. I'll show you a business that needs Office Depot. I save time, my boss saves money. They've always got what I need in stock. Care of and they always guarantee the lowest price. Care of they buy for less, they sell for less. Care of and you certainly can't beat the service. Nobody sells more office supplies than Office Depot. Still the biggest, still the best. Still taking care of business one customer at a time.
Back at the Orange Bowl, eight minutes, 28 seconds left to go first quarter. Miami on a Santana Moss 39-yard touchdown run on a reverse has put the Canes on top. There are the deep receivers for Arkansas State. Number eight to the left of the screen, Waldell Harp, and number 21, Chappelle Mitchell. Back to receive George Gaitan's kickoff. This is Chappelle Mitchell at the three. And brought down by Tavokius Bonner up at the Arkansas State 24-yard line, a 21-yard return. And that's where the Indians will set up shop, first and 10. John, Miami has not been a huge turnover team this season, uh, but the two turnovers in the first quarter already before the Moss touchdown run. Butch Davis said uh, after Thursday's practice, they were very sloppy, they didn't practice well, and he, he always believes you play how you practice. Now, obviously, they're the more talented team today, but they want to look sharper going into Virginia Tech next week, certainly. First and 10. And Tinsley with the football. Tinsley across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Number 22, Leonard Myers, the freshman cornerback in on the stop for Miami, but a nice pickup of seven yards on first down for Austin Tinsley. Yeah, Austin Tinsley gets into the ball game due to the suspension. He did a nice job cutting outside. A lot of penetration in the middle by 44, Morgan, but did a nice job scoring his shoulders up. And as you said, the freshman Myers on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Scoring drive, just one play and 39 yards, th taking 13 seconds on the Santana Moss reverse on second and three. Tinsley again, not much there, but keeps the legs turning and gets close to first down yardage at the 34. It will depend on where the official marks the football. Chad Pegeson on the tackle for Miami. And Michael Smith helping out. Looks to be a bit short of the first down. And they'll call timeout, and Ridge Detillier, our Big East referee today, will call the chains in and they'll measure as Arkansas State looks for their initial first down. Joe Hollis. The head coach at Arkansas State came from Ohio State where he was an offensive coordinator and spent a couple years on the staff with the current Miami offensive coordinator, Larry Coker. Yeah, had great success at Ohio State. And you see right there, just shy of the first down, they're going to take a real good look at this <laughs> and, and just shy of the, of the first down there. So it'll bring up a third down in, in a couple of inches for Arkansas State. But they have a very innovative offense. I'm just not sure if they match up real well against Miami's defense, especially team speed. Miami should run sideline to sideline as, as well as anyone in the country. You saw the total yardage, Miami already up over 100 with 724 left to go in the first quarter. But, of course, the interception on the first play of the game and then the Edger and James fumble at the Arkansas State one-yard line costing Miami potential scoring drives. So it'll be third and uh, about an inch or two. The ball sitting at Arkansas State's 34-yard line. You see the time remaining in the first quarter. And a good look at Cleo Lemon, the freshman quarterback for the Arkansas State Indians out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Population about 50,000. They've already played Georgia and Virginia Tech this year, in addition to their normal schedule as an independent. On third down, Lemon will keep it and should have the first down, and he does across the 35-yard line. So the Indians move the sticks for the first time today. Credit Cliff Jackson and Chad Pegues being in on that tackle for the Miami defense. And with 7-12 left to go first quarter, the initial first down of the day for Arkansas State. Butch Davis, who attended and graduated from the University of Arkansas, where he was a defensive end, so he is not unfamiliar with uh, Jonesboro and that vicinity. Tight formation with one wide out for the Indians on first down. Alcorn, the fullback, in motion. Tinsley gets to the outside and knocked out of bounds finally after a gain of 12 up to the 48-yard line. Dennis Scott brought him out, but uh, Austin Tinsley, 5'10", 205 senior from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, finding some running room. Yeah, showing a lot of power, and now he's showing some speed to the outside. You see a very tight formation by the Indians, and Inslee, Tinsley just bounces it outside. You see a lot of red jerseys on, white jerseys, especially on the outside. Westbrook, number 18, does a nice job downfield on Leonard Myers, giving him, enabling his back, Tinsley, to get a couple more yards and move the change for the second time. Tinsley with 22 yards on three carries. He remains the tailback and has the football. And across midfield to the Miami 49-yard line, Cliff Jackson and Michael Smith on the tackle for Miami. Gain of three. It'll bring up second and seven for the Indians. And Joe Hollis urging his offense on. When teams, Frank, have had success against Miami, usually it is running the football. 
especially in this Big East Conference. A lot of teams like to pound out the football, and that's where Miami has been weakest on defense. Well, certainly West Virginia beat them that way, and Boston College rang up a lot of yards and a lot of points by running the football. On second down, play fake. Lemon with the rollout. Under pressure, throws and complete at the Miami 38-yard line to number 18, David Westbrook. Gain of 11, and that will be a first down for Arkansas State. Dwayne Starks on the coverage, but a good comeback route from Westbrook. Yeah, and you can't ask Starks to be in any better position on the wideout Westbrook. He had him covered like a blanket, but just a terrific throw by Cleo Lemon. And he eludes pressure. Watch 44. Dan Morgan, he gets blocked, but 99, you see on the outside, Fortney makes him step up, but a terrific ball down low into the inside. That's where it had to be to be a completion against great coverage against with Starks. Lenny Johnson in motion from his wide receiver position. Give to the fullback Alcorn, and Michael Smith is there to stuff him right in the hole. Helped out by Damian Lewis, and good penetration by the Miami defensive front there. Pegues got in and set up Smith for the tackle. Yeah, did a nice job, did the linebacking court, but watch the cutback. The fullback really missed it. The cutback lane was there. He didn't take it, and a nice job by the outside. Michael Smith, number 59, did a terrific job coming up and stuffing the run behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of a yard will bring up second and 11 for the Indians at Miami's 38-yard line. 5-10 to go first quarter. Kane's up 7-0. Double wide outs to the top of the screen. Delay, give to Tinsley. Got away from one, got away from two, and gets down to the 31-yard line before Dennis Smith and Dwayne Starks combine on the tackle. A gain of seven will bring up third and about four. Well, that's the case of Tinsley really not getting on film against uh, anybody, and Miami really not prepared to see how he's going to run the football. But he's showing a lot of strength and a lot of speed in the uh, tackle box area, running in the middle of the football field against the University of Miami. Miami going to have to toughen up against the run, not only here, but with the upcoming games against Virginia Tech and Syracuse. Need to get better against the run. Ninth play of the drive from the 31-yard line. Fullback, it's Tinsley, and Cliff Jackson makes the tackle at the 25-yard line, but that is good for an Arkansas State first down. Arkansas State really spreading the football field out that time. They wanted to move Dan Morgan out of that real linebacker position, get him out on the flanker, and then run a quick trap to the inside. Very successful. You see the middle of the field. Everybody's out of there. All he has to do is break the line of scrimmage. A great tackle by the middle linebacker, Jackson, number 49. Not until the Indians have a first down. Portland Phillips, number 24, will give Tinsley a break at the tailback position. Jaquise Walker is the fullback. And Walker has the football. And Walker has a gain of five before Dan Morgan brings him down along with Matt Sweeney. So Arkansas State finding some room on the ground. They really are. They're finding a lot of creases and seams up in that Miami defensive front, which I didn't think would be there. You take a look at how big the Arkansas State line is, 325 uh, pounds, their left tackle, but they're really not that big up front. So Miami should have an advantage. But right now, the defensive front of the Canes getting pushed around a little bit. Second and five for the Indians at the Miami 20. This is Corlin Phillips. And Phillips squeezes out close to four yards. Cliff Jackson at the bottom of the pile for Miami. Leonard Myers helping out on the tackle. It'll bring up third and short from Miami's 17-yard line. Frank, you talk about getting excited. You take a look at the bench of the Indians on the sidelines. They've got about 48 bodies inside of 10 yards all cheering the offense on. There's only about 12 guys on the upside field of the 50, so everybody's getting into the ball game. They're having great success running the football against the Canes, and this is a big game for them coming down to the Orange Bowl and playing against a big-time opponent. Third down and about two. All corn the fullback in motion. Give to Jaquis Walker. He bounces outside and has room. And Jaquise Walker gets it down inside to the one-yard line as the official marks him out at the one. Leonard Myers pushed him out. Jaquise Walker with a 15-yard gain. Walker did a great job of never giving up and keeping his legs going. There was nowhere to run in the middle of the football field. He was trying to find a hole, but he kept the Pistons going in the inside. Take a look here. Just a direct handoff to the fullback. Really nowhere to run. Miami over-pursues. It looked like Morgan ran into the free safety Ridgely, and then great blocking on the outside. Westbrook stayed with his with the uh, defensive back, enabling him to get to the one. First and goal, Cleo Lemon does not get in. Jackson, Morgan, and the rest of the Miami defensive front stop him for the time being. 
So Arkansas State, John, already has done a better job running the football than Temple did last week. Yeah, you're right. They've done a terrific job up front, really controlling the line of scrimmage. And had they not given the football up on the first play offensively, they could be going in for their second score of the ball game. So far, 13 plays and 75 yards on this drive. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter. We're down to 156. Well, Joe Hollis knows from being at Ohio State, he knows that smash mouth football pretty well. Lemon on the sneak. No signal yet. And I, apparently he is not in. So it'll bring up third and goal. Now they signal touchdown. Well, Cleo Lemon scores from a yard out. And Arkansas State is right back in it. Yeah, it looked like he was clearly in, but I think that pile was so big in between uh, the uh, hash marks, you really couldn't t tell where Cleo Lemon was. He was over the goal line touchdown for the Indians. Just a quarterback sneak. Ducks his head and he tries to get low. Miami did a good job of staying low. It looked like after he was underneath the pile, may have stretched the football over for the score. 14 plays and 76 yards. Jeff Sowell's extra point is good. And with a minute 41 left to go first quarter, we are tied at 7-7 here in the Orange Bowl. So Arkansas State comes back to tie it. It's 7-7 between Arkansas State and Miami. We'll take a break here on Sports Channel, right back at the Orange Bowl after this. The Miami Dolphins are on the move, and it's time for Dolph fans everywhere to unite. What better way to share in the excitement than by joining the official Miami Dolphin Club? Membership levels are designed for every fan. First, the Kids Club offers younger fans a chance to feel a part of the excitement. Then, there's the Aqua and Orange levels, offering an assortment of great gifts specially designed for the avid Dolphin. Finally, the family level lets the whole family enjoy the benefits of being a member. It's time to unite and share in the excitement. Join the Dolphin Club today. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school with Dynamic Practice Organization, a revolutionary new instructional videotape. Dynamic Practice Organization features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky with his famous building block approach to athletic training. This exciting instructional videotape features the same drills, techniques, and methods that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Dynamic Practice Organization makes any coach look like a genius and organizes offensive and defensive practices that players of all ages and ability levels can't wait to attend. And immensely improves team communication skills and even conditioning. This is the instructional video that's a winner. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-282-5020. The Dynamic Practice Organization teaching video makes a great gift, too. Call now, 1-800-282-5020. A minute 41 left to go first quarter. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Sports Channel as the Indians of Arkansas State have come back to tie Miami at 7-7, seven to seven, a one-yard touchdown run by Cleo Lemon. Santana Moss, number 48. Jeff Popovich, number 33. Back to receive Andy McPherson's kickoff. Frank, I have a feeling Santana Moss may return one today. Uh, just Miami did a terrific job on the opening kickoff, getting body on body. Onside kick, and they touched it at the 46-yard line, and they'll have the football. The kicker got it himself, McPherson. And I had a feeling Arkansas State may try something like that. They're one and seven. What do they have to lose? Uh, terrific timing by the kicker, McPherson. Just did a great job of waiting till the ball traveled 10 yards, and then he goes up with his right hand. Take a look at just a, a great hop. If you're playing shortstop, that's Taylor made. He did a great job of going up, getting the football, and then just securing it. Excellent call on special teams by Coach Hollis. Well, Andy McPherson, you get the feeling he's practiced that quite a bit. That's when you love the kicker. Sometimes, you know, when they miss that extra point or field goal, you come up and nobody gives them a hand. That time, everybody's around and I'm patting them on the back saying, great job. So from their own 46, Arkansas State has the ball right back. And it's Tinsley. Tinsley gets away to the outside. Leonard Myers has to make another tackle. And it's at the Miami 47, a gain of seven. Yeah, Tinsley breaks the tackle. It looked like Nate Webster, number 52, in at middle linebacker. He's showing great acceleration to the outside. He's not a big back. We said at 5'10", 210 pounds, but he is a senior, so he has had practice time, and he's been through the wars for the Indians. Does a nice job of bouncing it to the outside. Watch him elude the tackle from the middle. It looked like Webster had him wrapped up, but he runs through that tackle, only to be hit out of bounds by the freshman Myers. Gain of seven on first down. This is Tinsley in motion. Give to the fullback, Walker, and he goes nowhere. Michael Lawson stacked him up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. 
Well, there's not a lot of people in the stands today. Miami is going to have to generate their own enthusiasm on defense. Here's the scoring drive for Arkansas State, culminating in Cleo Lemon's one-yard touchdown run. 14 plays, 76 yards, and over six and a half minutes gone on the clock. Yeah, they chewed up some valuable time in that first in the first quarter against Miami's defense. They went the length of the football field, did a great job with offensive line, really surprising, dominating the Miami defensive interior so far. Motion from Lenny Johnson. Lemon will throw. Complete and caught at the 41-yard line, number 80, Sean Cockrell making the play. Nate Webster on the tackle for Miami, but that's a first down for Arkansas State. The gain was 12. Very similar to the play Ryan Clement threw an interception on. Had the wide receiver Cockrell coming inside after motion to the outside. Lemon did a nice job of being patient. He knew he only needed four yards for the first down, but he was rocked. Cockrell was rocked from that middle linebacker spot. Nate Webster really put a pop to him. I'll correct myself. It was a gain of six from the 47 to the 41. And that is the end of the first quarter here at the Orange Bowl after 15 minutes. It's Miami 7, Arkansas State 7. We'll be right back here at the Orange Bowl. has been a season to remember, filled with some of the greatest moments in Marlins history. Now's your chance to be here in 1998 for another season of Marlins memory. That's right, Marlins 1998 season tickets are on sale now. Don't miss the excitement as the Marlins defend their National League championship. Beat the rush, the best seats are available now. Call 930-HITS and place your deposit today. The Florida Marlins 1998 season, be here when it happens. Start of the second quarter here at the Orange Bowl, and somewhat surprisingly, Arkansas State in a seven-all tie with Miami. The Indians have run the ball effectively. Miami's turned it over twice in the first quarter and recovered an onside kick following their touchdown. And from that point, they have moved it from their own 46 to the Miami 41, where they have first and 10 to begin the second quarter. Dan Morgan, number 44, is being worked on on the Miami sideline. They're looking at his leg. So right now, Jeffrey Taylor in an outside linebacker for Miami. Tinsley across the 40 to the 39-yard line. Michael Smith and Nate Webster making the tackle. Gain of two on first down as the Miami linebackers stepped up. And there is a look at Dan Morgan, the freshman out of Taravella High School. Could be a crucial loss if this is serious. Morgan has led the team in total tackles the last three weeks. And usually if you're looking for the football, he's around. A great instincts for a defensive linebacker, only a freshman. But it could be a key loss for Miami down the stretch. Give Tinsley credit for three on the first down carry. Bring up second and seven. Just underway second quarter. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Sports Channel. Again, Tinsley with the football. And Quincy Hips drags him down at the 36-yard line. A pickup of about three. And it'll bring up a third and four for Arkansas State. This is what they want to do, John. Shorten the game. Keep control of the football. Well, Miami's defense has been on the field. The last scoring drive by the Indians, six minutes and 47 seconds. Now we're into the second quarter, and the Indians really controlling the football offensively on the ground. Now they come up with a third and a long five, so they may have to throw the football, but they haven't, they haven't taken any chances going down the field in the air, really running the football. They've had great success. Third and five. Tinsley, the lone back behind Cleo Lemon. On the draw, Tinsley met by Jeffrey Taylor and Dennis Scott helping out. A gain of four. It's going to bring up a fourth and a yard. Well, obviously, four down territory for the Indians. And again, they're one and seven, and they don't have anything to lose. Yeah, they're going for this on fourth down. You can tell right now they're bringing their big team in and keeping uh, the big guys on the field. But you see the draw play, a nice call, conservative call, because you don't throw the football that effectively, but you are running the football. So they spread Miami out by formation, try to spring their tailback through, but it brings up a fourth and one, just what they want to be in right now. Tinsley the tailback, Alcorn the fullback.
pitch to Tinsley, fumbles the ball, and he falls on it, but it doesn't matter. The fourth down play, it'll go over to Miami. Well, Dwayne Starks penetrated and got in there. I'm not sure if they would give credit for a fumble recovery. I think Tinsley got the ball back, but Arkansas State will turn it over on downs. Yeah, and also Tinsley stays on the ground, but they really take the football off the line of scrimmage. Miami did a great job on the corner. You see Dwayne Starks, number 23. He was out there ready to make the play for the Canes defense. I thought they may go inside the tackles, possibly to draw Miami off sides, but they've had great success running north and south. That time they go outside, and they turn the football over on downs. First and 10 Miami at their own 38-yard line. Edger and James set behind Ryan Clement. Mondrell Fulcher, the tight end in motion, comes back the other way. James, big room, 50, 45 of Arkansas State and down to the 42-yard line. Lavelle Alexander making the tackle out of his linebacker spot, but a pickup of 20 for Edger and James. Nobody home on the short side of the field for Arkansas State. Looked like Miami did a great job of getting people on people up front. We'll take a look at the tight end motion, and then James just pops it off the left side. He did a great job, just a little counterplay by the Miami offense, and a nice job pulling out. Carlos Cajayas, number 72, anchors the corner, and James runs into open field. Nice job by the Canes offensive line. Back to live action with the ball just inside the 42 of Arkansas State. Canes go with the double tight end. James again, and Alexander makes a nice play to hold him to a gain of maybe a half a yard. LaBelle Alexander, a six foot, 200 pound senior out of uh, Senatobia, Mississippi. Give James a yard, he'll bring up second and nine. Yeah, Alexander on the season, he has three tackles for a loss. That time, James only gets a yard, but a nice job off the corner. Right away, he came untouched. That time, the Miami offensive line didn't account for the linebacker, the outside backer, number 10, Alexander, big play on first down. Carlos Callejas simply missed him. Second and nine. Clement to throw. Going deep for Santana Moss. Could not hang on. That should have been a touchdown. Ryan Clement put it right on the money. Rodney Allen had the coverage, but Santana Moss should have had his second touchdown. Well, those are the plays Miami in the start of the season didn't make due to a bad throw, or in this case, didn't come up with a catch you have to make. Couldn't have been a better throw by number 16, Ryan Clement. Just aired it out a little out and up and just puts a lot of air under the football, hit him dead in stride. All he has to do is catch the football and fall down for a six-pack, but he lets it go through his arms in completion. The true freshman out of Miami Carroll City High School should have had six more. Third down for Miami. Blitz coming, flags down as the gift goes to Edger and James. James cuts it back at the 30. James to the 20. Chappelle... Mitchell are the only one who can get him, and he can't. It's a Miami touchdown. We'll check out the flag. A 41-yard score if it stands. Yeah, and it, it looked, looked like Alexander jumped into the neutral zone. It really did. It looked like it was offsides on the defense. Came across. He was in the neutral zone, but it was a terrific run by number five, Edron James. We said at the top, he has great acceleration to go with great size and speed. He does a good job just on the draw play right up the middle. Wanted to go right. Saw the hole to the left. Great vision, and now just the power and speed on the outside. Watch the stiff arm at the 10-yard line. He just fights his way into the end zone. So Edger and James with a touchdown again. That is his 10th of the season. Eight rushing, one receiving. Andy Crossland trying to add the conversion. Kick is up and good. And with 11 minutes and 17 seconds left to go second quarter, Miami has regained the lead. It's the Hurricanes 14, Arkansas State 7. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl right after this on Sports Channel. Year in and year out, it's been proven that big-time players and teams come from the elite Big East Conference. Welcome to the future. Today's Miami Hurricane basketball is big-time Big East basketball at its best. Come see stars like All-American candidate Tim James and his teammates take on the best of the Big East. All at the Miami Arena, all for one low price. Miami Hurricane basketball, big-time Big East basketball. Call 1-800-GO-CANES for tickets. Where are you going to be? AutoNation USA presents Sunday Morning NFL, the most comprehensive coverage of Florida's three NFL franchises on Sports Channel's Sunday Morning Playbook. Get a complete preview of the day's matchups. Like the Dolphins, the Tampa Bay Bucks are hot. 
really odd. What does Buffalo have to do to beat Miami? Jacksonville in the driver's seat for the playoffs. Two to AutoNation USA presents Sunday Morning NFL on Sports Channel every Sunday at 10 a.m. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. There's a new team in Florida. Sports. CNN Assigner is joining forces to bring you the most complete sports coverage available. Sports Channel's full schedule of live, professional, and amateur Florida sports, combined with CNN SI's sports news coverage, creates a perfect complement for you, the Florida sports fan. The leader in Florida sports is now offering the world of sports. Great vision and now the power and beauty on the outside. Watch sports this Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. Into the end zone. So Edger and James... I've had the same friends again. since I was a little kid. This year, some of them started playing with these other kids. And they were, you know, different. And I heard my big brother saying some pretty bad stuff about people like them. But they seem pretty cool. So maybe my brother doesn't know everything. Hey, Carlos, come on, we need you. Don't be afraid. Be your friend. For the Hurricanes, as we mentioned, four plays, 62 yards. And the Edger and James touchdown run, a minute 29, elapsed off the clock. It is holding against Arkansas State on the penalty. And that will cost them 10 with 10 minutes and 57 seconds left to go second quarter. Frank, this is the point in the game last week against Temple that really Miami dominated because of their size and speed and playing in the Orange Bowl in the heat. Holding. Offense. 10 yards. Spot and foul. Replay. First down. Although it's not as hot as it was last week, but they did a great job of dominating the game from the second quarter on. Let's take a look at the offensive line play and uh, a lot of hand fighting going on. Yeah, it does. It looks like a game of tag sometimes in there with the offensive line using their hands, getting them out in front of their body. There was a couple calls in there that could have been. They only got one. That's Cor all they needed. That's all they needed is right. Corlin Phillips, the lone running back behind Lemon on first and 20. The give to Phillips. And he gets up across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Jeffrey Taylor made the tackle. And it's those, those first and long, second and long, where Miami's been vulnerable to the run, John. You see them on a sec, uh, first and 15 or a second and 15, and they give up 12, 13 yards on a run. Well, it looks like a lot of the guys are going for the... They think it's going to be a pass. They're getting upfield, but they're just getting pushed behind the all the action. The linebackers and the defensive linemen are getting pushed by the running backs, and that's even giving them more room to run. The... Uh, Indian offensive line doing a good job of trying to turn the Miami defenders and let them go where their speed is taking them, and the running backs are doing a good job of finding the holes inside. Second and 12. Lemon will throw it. Time to throw. Down the middle, complete to his tight end, Ron Teed at the Miami 45-yard line. And that is first down yardage, a gain of 24. Cliff Jackson making the tackle for Miami, but he was in the trail position coming down the middle of the field. Leo Lemon showed, showed great poise and, and patience in staying in the pocket. Denny Fortney really laid a hit on him at the end of that pass, and Ron Teed, he's 6'3", 250 pounds. It takes him a little while to get down in the middle of the field. He's waiting for him to turn his head. He takes a shot, but just a great touch pass over the linebackers of the Canes. First and 10 at the Miami 45-yard line. Lemon gives to Phillips, and Phillips is met in the hole by Nate Webster. Got away for about a yard, and Nate Webster matted himself that he didn't completely wrap up the tackle. James Sutton had to finish him off. Corlin Phillips got a yard, but Webster with a nice attack up into the hole. Yeah, very aggressive by Nate Webster. You'll see that a lot. Also, number 43, you'll see James Sutton do a good job of being aggressive, but the fullback, Phillips didn't wait for his fullback. There was a fullback there right there. He didn't wait for him to deliver the block on Webster or Sutton. Ran right by him, and, and sometimes you deserve to get a hit if you're not going to wait for your blocking, Frank. Well, Cliff Jackson was pulled from the game right after that completion to the tight end. The tight end ran right by him down the middle, and Nate Webster now in at middle linebacker. Second and nine for the Indians. Lemon still has it. Under pressure. Throws complete at the 45. And Jacquees Walker dropped out at the Miami 39-yard line. Jeffrey Taylor made the tackle. That's a pickup of close to seven. It'll bring up third and about three. And a Miami player down, or it's Jacquees Walker, excuse me, right on the Miami sideline. I'm sorry, it is a Miami player. Looking, trying to look through three trainers, and it's uh, Dennis Scott, the strong safety, limping off. Let's take another look at it. 
play just took a long time developing. They had it right away, but Miami's team speed at linebacker, they do a good job of catching up to the play. The, if the play was there early, he would have get, had enough time to get the first down, but Ooh. Taylor did a great job of running to the sideline. You see the injury right there to his left knee, it looked like. Yeah, right. downfield blocker, and he caught him right in the side of the knee. Third down and three for Arkansas State. 8.30 left to go second quarter. Austin Tinsley is the running back behind Cleo Lemon. Lemon gives it to Tinsley. Tinsley cannot get away. Nate Webster making the play for a loss of a yard. Nate Webster, and you see the big brace on his left elbow, dislocated that elbow in the second game of the year against our, uh, Arizona State, and just returned to action last week against Temple. Yeah, they weren't going to be fooled for the second time. Third and a short, they spread the football field out. They're going to run the draw again. Lemon does a good job getting his eyes downfield, but you see Webster coming from the middle, forcing the running back, Tinsley, to bounce to the outside. A nice job by the middle linebacker, Nate Webster. And again, on fourth down, Arkansas State looks like they're going to go for it. Fourth and four, they have to get to the Miami 35-yard line. Yeah, they may take a timeout here because the clock's inside, the 25-second clock's inside seven seconds. And that looks like what either that or they're just going they're to just take the delay go, game yeah. penalty and punt. And the flag is down. They will take the delay of game intentionally and move back five yards to give their punter a little better angle at the coffin corner. So Scott Simons comes on to the field with the kicking team. And they'll move the put football back to the Miami 44-yard line. Simons standing at his own 43. And they'll hit the punt from there. And Dwayne Starks will drop Player back game. to the C4, Miami. Offense. Penalty refused. Down remains. Fourth down. Well, the penalty has been refused by Miami. And that's somewhat of a gamble because then they, they may decide yeah. to go for it. And they only have four yards to make. Fourth down. Four. Dwayne Starks this year, 18 returns, an 11.8 average, and a touchdown from 85 yards away. That came in the opener against Baylor. Good snap. Simons gets the ball away. Toward the near sideline. Rodney Allen trying to down it. Touched it about oh, the three-yard line. And he got a nice bounce. It hit him right in the leg and fell, falls dead at the Miami three-yard line. That's where the Canes will start. A 35-yard punt. Terrific play on special teams by the Indians. Allen did a nice job. He's a strong safety on defense, but gets down there on the outside. One of the flyers on the outside, closest to the Miami sideline, did a great job of keeping that ball from crossing the goal line. Right here, did a nice job of just getting both hands behind the football and pushing it back into the field of play for Arkansas State. You need to be a little bit lucky and a little bit yeah, good. He got he a do. nice bounce, but he had good technique with his hands, so... He made the play. Good job by Rodney Allen. The Canes will start first and 10 from their three. Nick Williams and James Jackson now the running backs. And it's Jackson. Picks his way across the five, out across the six-yard line before he's brought down. Frank, I'm not sure if Edger and James hurt his shoulder in the end zone. That's only my guess by looking at it when the play happened. But it looked like he came to the sidelines and was talking with the coaches, especially Don Solinger, the running backs coach. And it looked like Jane Jackson started warming up immediately. Well, Edger and James is standing on the bench. He's not receiving any treatment right now. Maybe it's, uh, they don't want to play him a lot if they don't have to today. Pick up a four by Jackson on first down, brings up second and six. Ryan Clement still has the football. And Ryan's going to take off across the 10, has a first down, and Ryan up around the 20-yard line before Rodney Allen forces him out, a pickup of 13 yards and a first down for the fleet-footed Ryan Clement. Yeah, let's not get carried away. He is fleet-footed when he needs to be, and that's that's a perfect job, perfect example of a smart quarterback. He wanted to force the football into his tight end, but he saw all the Indians running away from him. This cowboy decides to tuck the ball underneath his shoulder, does a nice job of showing some speed to the outside. That's some, something we haven't seen from him, Frank. He doesn't need to do it a lot, but he's effective when he does tuck the football and is determined to run the football north and south. First down, Miami. James Jackson again with the football. Good blocking, flag down. They'll bring this one back. Good hit up at the 29-yard line as well. Bell Alexander in on the tackle along with uh, Coder Little, number 43. But they're going to bring this one back for holding. Yeah, it looked like Clarence Williams, the defensive end for Arkansas State, was tackled at the line of scrimmage. His shirt, you can't even read his number right now, but it uh, looked like he was tackled. Yeah, and Rich Detillier will figure it out. And they'll mark off 10. Flag is sitting at the 18-yard line, so that'll bring it back to the Miami 8. 
Holding. Holding. Offense. Off Ten yards. Ten spotted yards. a foul. Replay first down. down. So with 6.34 left to go second quarter, it's still Miami 14, Arkansas State 7, the Indians hanging around. And the one thing you don't want here is a turnover and give this team a chance to, to get back in the game. Dennis Scott, whom we saw blocked in the side of the knee on the last Arkansas State possession, heading toward the locker room on crutches, and he was very upset. Jackson cut back in the hole, across the 15, up to the 20, and no further. But a pickup of 12 as he got back all the penalty yardage. And it'll bring up a second and 10 for Miami. Frank, that's the type of run you're used to seeing Edron James make, breaking a couple arm tackles and still going and then putting the burst on. That time, James Jackson did a great job of running inside the tackles. Watch him right here. The cut right there goes up north and south, and now he breaks a couple arm tackles. All you do when you see two defenders coming at you, you try to split them, and usually they'll spit you out the backside, and he did a great job of continuing across the 20-yard line. On second down, Clement with the play fake. Now under some pressure. Finds his tight end at the 25-yard line, make it the fullback, Carlo Joseph. That's a gain of four. The pass was low, and Carlo went down to catch it, did not have an opportunity to run, and it'll bring up a third and five. Sean Mitchell was there on the coverage, but could not do anything to prevent the completion. 5.23, and the clock moving here in the second quarter. Joe Hollis has to be happy with the way his team has competed today. After all, they lost to Virginia Tech at Blacksburg 50 to nothing earlier in the season. Yeah, they're playing very hard, especially the interior lines. I thought Miami would have their way running the football and really getting to the uh, quarterback of the Indians, but doing a good job up front, staying with Miami so far early in this football game. On third and five. Clement to the outside. Nick Williams bobbles, catches, and should have a first down. Denisio Blanchett on the tackle, and Nick Williams, a little anxious moment there, but he did haul it in. The big 6'2", 269-pound junior out of Farmington, Michigan. Yeah, Chappelle Mitchell, number 21, a step too late. Tried to step in front of this throw. Almost ripped it out of Nick Williams' hands, but Nick Williams is 269, and he goes at 6'2", so it's a tough job, a tough task for Mitchell on the corner. Great concentration by the Hurricane pullback just to secure the catch. They needed five. They got six. On first down, James Jackson with a flag down. Jackson across the 35, across the 40 and hauled down by Sean Mitchell, but again, a flag at the line of scrimmage. Jackson, rushes, flags on the play. And the referee crew will sort this out. It is offside against the defense. And I think Miami would take the play because it is at or near the first down marker. And a look at Joe Hollis, the Arkansas State head coach. Struggling through a one and seven year, they opened against Georgia and lost to the Bulldogs 38 to seven. Outside, outside, defense, defense. penalty review. Results of the play. We'll have a measure. And they will measure. While we do measure, we already mentioned that uh, Virginia Tech swamped the Indians 50 to nothing. Memphis beat them 38 to nine. And last week they lost at New Mexico State. Butch Davis trying to get his team back to 500 was not happy, as we mentioned, with their practice habits this week taking this team a little bit lightly. Dennis Scott, we're told, has a left knee sprain at least and is out for the game. Yeah, defense is where the Miami Hurricanes cannot be injured. The offensive line, another spot, but you see Dan Morgan sitting on the sidelines. Looks like he's out for the ball game. Now you get word that the strong safety, the starting strong safety, Dennis Scott out in the ball game. So defensively, they have a lot of depth at linebacker, but right now, two guys that they really need in there, not for the Hurricanes. Number 44, Dan Morgan, you see, with the uh, pants leg on the left leg pulled up. They were just short of the first down. 4.34 left to go first half. And Miami with uh, just the one touchdown lead. Huge favorites in this game. James Jackson, three carries, 26 yards on this drive. Frank, I really see Miami on the outside going for a home run again. They, they had someone behind the secondary. Santana Moss on an out and up went behind the Indian secondary. I see the wide receivers for Miami having no problem putting some moves on and getting deep for Ryan Clement in this football game. Eric Schnupp coming into the ball game. Mike Weiner apparently has an equipment problem. The starting center, Ty Wise, will move over to center, and Eric Schnupp will slide in at guard. On this second and one play from the Miami 41-yard line, Frank Fort, John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel as we bring you Hurricane football from the Orange Bowl. On second and one, Clement Playfake. He is looking deep. 
and he's got Daryl Jones wide open. Jones at the 25. Daryl Jones is going to take it to the house. A 60-yard touchdown play. Ryan Clement to Daryl Jones. Well, they finally listened to the announcers, Frank. We you thought we it. had it. And it easy in, the, in this football game, earlier in this football game, Santana Moss gets by. Now the freshman does a great job. Daryl Jones going up the left sideline from the far sideline. Ryan just threw a terrific ball. Great job. Watch him fight to the outside here. Just a little hand fighting. Now he puts on the speed. There's no help to the... There's no help in the deep third. He just runs underneath the football, uses his speed, did a great job of concentrating on the football. It's an easy catch. Now it's just a race to the end zone, and Jones wins that one. Andy Crossland on to attempt the conversion out of the Popovich hold. Pick it up, and it is good. And with 424 left to go in the second quarter, Miami has taken a two-touchdown lead. It's the Hurricanes 21, Arkansas State 7. We'll be back here on Sports Channel right after this. There's a new team in Florida. Sports Channel Florida and CNNSI are joining forces to bring you the most complete sports coverage available. Sports Channel's full schedule of live professional and amateur Florida sports combined with CNNSI's sports news coverage create the perfect complement for you, the Florida sports fan. A leader in Florida sports is now offering the world of sports through CNNSI, the sports news network. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. He was the first head coach in football history to win both a Super Bowl title and a national assist. And the Jazz rookie, Jacques Vaughn, could he keep things in order until Stockton gets back? Watch him go. The sweet reverse lay, two of his six points on the night. This one, all Utah down the stretch. Jeff Hornacek goes in for the reverse. Hornacek, nice, 14 points. Then Carl Malone, and this is significant because he's made his career with the fadeaway. More on Malone scoring. Job of getting outside and then using his speed. Ryan did a nice job. He had plenty of time to step up and throw the football. He just aired it out, and Jones did a great job of coming from the outside in to receive the ball and then going to the front pylon for the Hurricane touchdown. And you saw, may have seen, as we look at the scoring drive, it started at the Miami three-yard line. It took him three minutes and three seconds. Daryl Jones, the touchdown pass from Ryan Clement. You may have seen on the replay, Mondrell Fulcher, the tight end, going right up the middle, and that took the safety with him, and there was no help on the outside for Mitchell, the corner. Yeah, exactly. He had no chance chance and no help from the deep third. A nice job by the tight ends of getting where they need to be to open someone else up. Gaitan's kickoff to the goal line. Waldell Harp has it. Harp across the 20. And brought down at the 23. Tavokius Bonner, number 19, making the tackle. And Arkansas State will start after the 23-yard return at their 23-yard line. Four minutes, 14 seconds left to go second quarter as Cleo Lemon leads the Indian defense, offense rather, back on the field. Miami started that drive at their own three-yard line and uh, they moved it all the way down the field for an important score. You say it's Arkansas State, but yeah, you still have to go out there, you still have to execute, and you still have to beat them. Joe Hollis talking to Chappelle Mitchell, who apparently did not throw a block for his fellow return man, or at least to Joe Hollis's satisfaction. Alcorn and Tinsley, the running backs, behind Lemon. And Lemon straight back, drop back, under some pressure. Pass complete. Nice catch up at the 35-yard line. And a first down. Lenny Johnson, number 19, the 5'8", 175 junior out of West Helena, Arkansas. Pick up is 12. And a first down for Arkansas State. Dwayne Starks had the coverage. Lemon wanted to go to his tight end. Teed again down the middle. Just took too long to get the ball to him. Nice coverage by the Miami linebacker. So he decides to go to his second receiver on the curl route. Johnson did a great job, but nice time provided by that offensive line for Cleo Lemon to step up and deliver a strike. And Miami simply has to get more pressure on the quarterback. Only 12 sacks so far this year. Tinsley in motion. Lemon again with the straight drop and again with time. Down the middle, incomplete, going for Johnson. Jeff Popovich had the coverage. Jeffrey Taylor, the linebacker, made a nice drop and got in the passing lane. Yeah, it looked like Taylor got a hand on it. Nice job at the middle linebacker position. That time, the linebackers dropped deep and stayed in their coverage. Cleo Lemon tried to fit the ball in the middle of the football field, but as you said, Popovich and Taylor on the stop for the Canes. Bring up the second and 10. 3.36 left to go second quarter. 
Miami simply this year has not done a good enough job of getting after quarterbacks. You mentioned yeah. only the 12 sacks, and you look at a, a statistic, they keep hurries. Denny Fortney has 14 hurries, but he has no sacks. Yeah, hurries and sacks turn into two completely different things, Frank. Miami showing blitz. Here they come from the outside. Tinsley is buried. Quincy Hips making the play. Michael Smith got a piece of him on the blitz, and Quincy Hips just blew him up. Yeah, it looked like that play was going nowhere from the start. Miami trying to get pressure on the corners. They did a nice job of getting into the backfield, and as you said, Quincy Hips from the outside. Take a look at all the pressure. There's five white jerseys in the backfield circling, and they finally find a ball carrier. Nice job, nice pressure, and good scheme by Miami that time on defense. Yeah, they ran the twist on the inside. Michael Lawson took away the blocker on Hips. Quincy curled to the inside and made the play as Miami came with both linebackers on the outside. Three minutes left to go second quarter. It's third and 14 for Arkansas State. Lemon under pressure. Hips can't get him. Flag down. And finally the tackle made by Michael Lawson for the loss of a yard and a late flag down as well. Looks like a clipping call maybe upcoming against Arkansas State. Two flags down, one at the 21, one at the 25 of the Indians. Yeah, it looked like Jason Sink, number 70, was trying to help out his quarterback, and then it looked like he popped off to the official a little bit, and that drew a second flag deep in the Indians' backfield. Here's Reg Dettelier. Well, illegal block and unsportsmanlike against Arkansas State, so this is double jeopardy for the Indians with 2.40 left to go in the first half, and Miami leading 21-7. to seven. Joe Hollis looking for some sort of explanation. Yeah, Joe's saying, how can you call that? We know the clip, but he didn't really talk to him long enough to get in trouble, it looked like. But, All it uh, takes is one uh, word. Reg didn't want to hear the one word he had, so he I drew another yellow flag to the Orange Bowl field. There are certain things called magic words in baseball, and I imagine a few of those exist in football. Yeah, one of the seven deadly ones, right? So our Big East officiating crew trying to sort this out as we have 2.40 left to go second quarter. Miami 21, Arkansas State 7. Edger and James has a 41-yard touchdown run for the Canes. Daryl Jones with a 60-yard touchdown catch. Let's look again. That could be the illegal block right there. Well, here the it comes. Uh, There's offensive also, tackle fell into Quincy Hips. Yeah, and also number 92, uh, Lewis, right here you see Pete from the behind. Just pushes him. That'll draw the flag, the first flag. And then I think uh, Mr. Pete and Reg had a little conversation behind the line of scrimmage, and that drew the second flag. Well, they still have not marked off the penalties. This is where you get into the technical part of officiating. The rules are so complex at times, especially when it comes to multiple penalties. And here it is, finally. We have an illegal block in the back. Offense. That penalty's refused. We have unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense. Live ball foul. Penalizes a dead ball foul. It will go back to the line of scrimmage. Penalize 15 yards. Play fourth down. Next week, war and peace. <laughs> You got it. <laughs> and Joe's saying, is it, wait, you said fourth down. Can you do that one more time? So I, get <laughs> I my hope punt, the math is right. So I can get my punt team on the field? I think Reg has a, has a calculator in the back of his pocket. Tune in to Sports Channel tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for 90 minutes of NFL pregame excitement. AutoNation USA presents Sunday morning NFL. Go inside the huddle with the Dolphins, the Buccaneers, the Jaguars every Sunday at 10 o'clock exclusively on Sports Channel. The result of the unsportsmanlike conduct is the ball has moved back to the Arkansas State 16-yard line. We're going to take a timeout with 2.40 left to go second quarter here at the Orange Bowl. It's Miami 21, Arkansas State 7. We'll be right back. I just enrolled my company in this health care plan, and I need some information on a small procedure. Just wait a moment, and we can call Debbie at Central. Who's Debbie? You'll love Debbie. She's in charge of your health. Is she a doctor? No, but she's really nice. I want my doctor. At HIP, doctors make decisions, not administrators. Call your broker or call HIP about our affordable small business plans. Call and get a 10-minute prepaid long-distance calling card and our free brochure on small business plans. So where do you get your health care? It's HIP.
40 left to go in the second quarter. Miami with the two touchdown lead on the Indians of Arkansas State. Uh, Scott Simon stands back inside his five to punt. Simon's two kicks today for a 38 and a half yard average. Butch Davis, the Hurricane head coach, trying to sharpen his team up. He said, look, anybody who thinks we're a good football team, we're not, at least not yet. Well, other than the opening play of the ball game where Ryan threw the interception on the, on the inside on the motion play, Miami's really played well offensively. They're running the football effectively. They've gotten deep twice. One was caught for a touchdown. The other one was dropped. But they've done a nice job of mixing in the run and pass. And they've been successful doing that the last couple of weeks, Frank. Simons will kick. Dwayne Starks to receive. Simons gets it away. Starks takes it on the run. It is 46 and has some room across the 50. And brought down at the Arkansas State 46-yard line. Denarius McCoy, a backup cornerback, number 36 on the special teams tackle. A 39-yard punt from Simons. And Dwayne Starks brought it back eight yards. Miami will start at the Arkansas State 46-yard line. Ryan Clement, the senior quarterback, will try and get... Another t uh, score on the board before halftime with 2.28 to go. You see Miami turned it over on their first two drives, but the three subsequent drives, they have all reached the end zone. See how the Canes do it here. James Jackson remains the tailback with Nick Williams the fullback. Clement on first down. Out pattern too far outside for Reggie Wayne and incomplete. Reggie looking for his first catch on the day. He leads Miami with 32 receptions. John, we're speculating that Edger and James, who uh, had a banged up shoulder coming into the game, is probably done for the day. Yeah, it looked like when he was tackled on that touchdown run, he was almost uh, tackled on that shoulder, really hogtied in back in the end zone, and the person that tackled him for Arkansas State landed right on that shoulder. So it looked like he may have aggravated a little bit. And as you said earlier, Frank, you don't want to play him that much in this ball game any anyway. On second and 10. Clement, pass incomplete. Can't tell if he was looking for Nick Williams or Santana Moss on an option route, and the ball falls incomplete. So it brings up a third and 10. Well, he was trying to get Santana Moss on a curl route. He wanted him to come back outside, just curl and come back outside of where he was running. That time Santana Moss rounds it off and the timing was thrown off a little bit on the pattern. Miami 4-4 four four on third down conversions today. And of course, Miami playing with basically all true freshman wide receivers. Magic Benton and Omar Roll have been relegated to the pine and, and using four wide receivers, all true freshmen for the most part. Reggie Wayne can run right by the cornerback right here if they give him a chance. Clement on third down. Reggie Wayne to the outside. What's the ruling? Incomplete. Rodney Allen had the coverage at the 35-yard line. For Reggie Wayne. So 0 for 3 on that sequence for Ryan Clement. And Chappelle Mitchell will go back to receive the punt. Arkansas State's defense is really settling at 15 yards, so it's really tough to get these intermediate curl routes because they're sitting right on them. What they need to do is stutter step and go right by these people and really back them off the Miami young wide receivers. They have enough speed to go by them and continue to be effective doing so. Andy Crossland to kick. Going for the near sideline. Darrell Jones trying to make a play on it, but the ball kicks into the end zone. The touchback will give it to Arkansas State at their own 20 with two minutes and seven seconds left to go in the second quarter. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be right back at the Orange Bowl. It's Miami 21, Arkansas State 7. Performance. It's my job. You need the right technology. You need the right skills. You need the right equipment. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right motor oil. You need to use your nine iron. Good thing he can drive. Sit, go, sirs. Go. FedEx will come to your office to pick up your two-day package for an extra charge. UPS will come to your office to pick up your two-day package for an extra charge. The U.S. Postal Service already comes to your office every day. So we'll pick up your priority mail two to three day package for free. So, what's your priority? Switch to priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Back at the Orange Bowl. Let's watch number, this is the last incompletion for Miami. 
that was not the penalty. The penalty came on the punt following this. It was an illegal block. Rodney Allen had the coverage on Reggie Wayne. But the punt uh, falling into the end zone for the touchback, there was an illegal block below the waist called on Arkansas State. So that moves it back to the 10-yard line. And with 2.07 left to go in the first half, that's where the Indians will begin play. Tinsley through a hole. Tinsley bouncing off tacklers and up to the 28-yard line. And some boos coming out from the smallish crowd. Poor tackling by Miami. Michael Smith finally made the play. Well, Frank, if, if Austin Tinley is their third-team tailback, I want to see the first two because he's shown me he can run with some authority in the middle and also show you some speed on the outside. Did a great job of breaking some tackles inside the tackle box. Watch him just attack the line of scrimmage right here. Great blocks by the offensive line. Jack Wright at the center did a great job along with Jason Sink. And then look at him spin off Miami defender, defenders. Did a great job of showing some size and some strength in the middle of that secondary of Miami. 14 carries for 60 yards for Austin Tinsley. And uh, Arkansas State took their time and now, now will have to call a timeout with a minute 35 left to go in the second quarter. We're going to take a break at the Orange Bowl. A minute 35 left to play until halftime. It's Miami 21, Arkansas State 7. We'll be back with the conclusion of the first half right after this. Year in and year out, it's been proven that big-time players and teams come from the elite Big East Conference. Welcome to the future. Today's Miami Hurricane basketball is big-time Big East basketball at its best. Come see stars like All-American candidate Tim James and his teammates take on the best of the Big East. All at the Miami Arena, all for one low price. Miami Hurricane basketball, big-time Big East basketball. Call 1-800-GO-CANES for tickets. Where are you going to be? What? What if my kids need shots? What if I get transferred to another city? What if I need to lose some weight? What if I need an x-ray? What if I need a new doctor? What if my baby comes early? What if I need blood? What if I break my arm? What if there was a healthcare organization with such innovative solutions to what you might need tomorrow that all you'd have to do is enjoy today? What if my brother makes me a bug? What if you didn't have to worry about healthcare? Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by ESPN Regional solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of ESPN Regional or Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. 135 to go second quarter, first and 10 Indians at their own 28. Tinsley again, and this time Matt Sweeney meets him right in the hole and holds it to no gain. And now Miami's got to think about maybe calling timeout. If, if our, 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 excuse me, Arkansas State, I'll get it in English, is going to run the, <laughs> is going to run the ball. You're right, because it's a minute and 19 and counting, and Arkansas State has no threat of throwing the football, and they're just really laying around the piles right now, and they will not go the length of the field by throwing the football. They need four and five and six minutes to put a score, so Miami really not using their timeouts. They have two of them left. Clock moving with now one minute to go in the second quarter as Butch Davis watches his defense. Double wide receivers to the top of your screen and the three wide receiver set. Again, Tinsley at the 30 and no further. Flags down. Quincy Hips and James Sutton combining on the tackle for Miami along with Cliff Jackson, the middle linebacker, number 49. After the play was over, personal foul, defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. And that is a gift first down for Arkansas State. And Butch Davis knows that there is no need for that. That's one thing he does not like is, is football that is not smart. Yeah, he doesn't like, doesn't like the penalty. He likes the people getting around the, the pile and around the... Uh, the ball carrier, but that was a bad play by Matt Sweeney from behind. You know, sometimes when you're standing around the pile, you're taught just to go ahead and, and put some punishment into people, but not when people have their backs turned to you, because that's a penalty. If somebody's trying to be aggressive, go ahead and size them up and, and you be aggressive, but don't take a dumb foul, a foul and a dumb penalty. Yeah, it was number 98, Matt Sweeney, that was guilty of the late hit. Arkansas State has had the ball for almost 20 minutes in this first half, but they trail at 21-7, as you can see. So the penalty on Sweeney who has been taken out of the ball game and obviously being talked to by the Miami coaching staff, replaced by number 95, Brian Stinson, at right defensive end. Lemon will put it up. Again has time and looking to go deep. And that ball's thrown out of bounds incomplete. 
It was intended for Lenny Johnson. Dwayne Starks had the coverage for Miami. Lenny Johnson running a, a stop and go on the outside, but great coverage, as you said, Frank, on the outside by number 23, Dwayne Starks. He's Miami's best defensive player in that secondary, and he does a great job of using his speed. He was beaten a little bit, but then used his speed to get back into the play. You can't see it right now, but to the top left of your screen, it was just a hitch and go, just a little pump fake, and then he lets it fly out of bounds. Didn't keep his receiver inside the football field, but as you see right there, Dwayne had already caught up with the receiver, Johnson, and had a great, great positioning on the play. Would have taken a perfect throw and a perfect catch. On second and 10 draw play Tinsley cuts back inside and will pick up about three or four Brian Stinson Jeff Popovich and Michael Smith all there on the tackle for Miami as the clock continues to run with 20 seconds left to go here in the second quarter and now timeout is called Arkansas State spending a timeout well, John, uh, if you're Butch Davis, have you seen what you're looking for in this first half? Well, other than the first two possessions where they had the interception and the fumble, I think Miami's played fairly aggressive on defense, and offensively, they've continued to run the football. I think the one thing you're concerned about is the way the Indians have run the football against the Miami Hurricane defense, because going into the next three ball games, Miami is really going to have to do a good job, especially next week when they go on the road. Virginia Tech can run the football against anybody. Virginia, uh, West Virginia did a good job of stopping them and winning the football game, but they played at home. Now Virginia Tech will go home and, and try to play Miami tough again as they, as they have the last couple of years. So that's the biggest concern, I think, for Butch Davis, trying to stop the running game of Virginia Tech next week. Yeah, the run defense has certainly been the Achilles heel of the Miami defense, and certainly in years past, uh, they've been a great run defense. They've been a great defensive team, period. But uh, right now, with young defensive tackles and, and light defensive ends, they're having a hard time being physical with people up front. And having some injuries. You know, Dan Morgan has not come back into the football game. They just get Nate Webster back with a dislocated elbow, and you have uh, Dennis Scott go out on crutches. So they're going to be limited and uh, have a lot of people getting some playing time today to see who's going to start next week. You see the time remaining, 16 seconds in the second quarter. You look at, at the Miami defensive depth chart, and there's just not a lot of experience there, not a lot of seniors. Denny Fortney's a senior, Dwayne Starks is a senior, Scott and Ridgely, the two safeties, but the linebackers are all young, the defensive tackles are all young, and uh, other than Denny Fortney, the defensive ends are all either sophomores or freshmen. Second and seven. Lemon now under some pressure, runs out of the pocket, Across the 50 to the Miami 40 and finally run out of bounds at the 38-yard line, but that'll take it down to seven seconds to go. Lemon used a lot of time trying to get out of bounds, but at least he may have picked up enough yardage where he can throw one into the end zone and maybe come up with a big play on the, on the last play of the half. Picked up close to 15 yards. And it's at the Miami 38 with seven seconds to go, so this at least will give them a shot at the end zone. Miami's been hurt by running quarterbacks this year as well. Pete Gonzalez hurt them. Uh, Ryan Keeley from Arizona State hurt them scrambling out of the pocket. Could be last play of the half. Lemon swings it out. Caught at the 30-yard line and bumped out of bounds at the 25. Corlin Phillips made the catch. And a gain of about 14 yards, but that will end the first half here at the Orange Bowl. Dwayne Starks made the tackle on the play, and the first half is in the books. From the Orange Bowl, it's Miami 21, Arkansas State 7. We'll be back with halftime activities. An interview with Coach Leonard Hamilton of basketball right after this. Year in and year out, it's been proven that big-time players and teams come from the elite Big East Conference. Welcome to the future. Today's Miami Hurricane basketball is big-time Big East basketball at its best. Come see stars like All-American candidate Tim James and his teammates take on the best of the Big East. All at the Miami Arena, all for one low price. Miami Hurricane basketball, big-time Big East basketball. Call 1-800-GO-CANES for tickets. Where are you going to be? 1997 has been a season to remember, filled with some of the greatest moments in Marlins history. Now's your chance to be here in 1998 for another season of Marlins memory. That's right, Marlins 1998 season tickets are on sale now. Don't miss the excitement as the Marlins defend their National League championship. Beat the rush, the best seats are available now. Call 930-HITS and place your deposit today. The Florida Marlins 1998 season, be here when it happens. 
I just enrolled my company in this health care plan, and I need some information on a small procedure. Just wait a moment, and we can call Debbie at Central. Who's Debbie? You love Debbie. She's in charge of your health. Is she a doctor? No, but she's really nice. I want my doctor. At HIP, doctors make decisions, not administrators. Call your broker or call HIP about our affordable small business plans. Call and get a 10-minute prepaid long-distance calling card and our free brochure on small business plans. So where do you get your health care? It's HIP. Back at the Orange Bowl at halftime between Arkansas State and the University of Miami, we're looking at basketball practice from earlier this week for Leonard Hamilton's men's basketball team. They'll get their season underway with an exhibition game a Friday night coming up, and we're pleased to be joined now by the head coach of the Miami Hurricanes, Leonard Hamilton. Coach, welcome, and uh, first of all, you made the NIT two out of the last three years, and I know the goal is to take that next step into the, the so-called big dance, the NCAA tournament. It's going to take some work, but I think uh, some of the talent's in place, and you've got a legitimate opportunity to do that this year. We're excited about the upcoming season. There's no doubt about that. Our kids are working very, very hard. But we have some things, we, areas we need to improve in, and ones we have to make sure that we narrow the gap that it normally takes for freshmen and young kids to improve. But we're working very hard, and we're very focused, and it looks like we're moving in that direction. You brought in three new players, three uh, true freshmen, one junior college transfer. How are those guys going to fit into the group? Well, right now, they're like most young players, and new players are trying to learn a system. Uh, they're they're making a lot of mistakes. They're trying to learn and think and, and play as hard as they can. It's hard to play with confidence. Uh, we think we're right on schedule. We have a couple more weeks before we have to actually start playing. That's November the 14th. Uh, the upcoming exhibition game on November the 7th is, is just what we need to play against someone else so we can find out where we are. You've got uh, two guys, I, from my understanding at least, that look like they're going to be in the starting lineup. Kevin Norris, the senior point guard. Tim James, your most athletic player. But, of course, that's always open to competition if I know you. And the other three spots right now are up for grabs. That, absolutely. Uh, Mario Bland probably has the most experience, and, and he's only a sophomore. Uh, you look at Lucas Barnes and Johnny Helsley, and they're sophomores. And we don't have the availability of Vernon Jennings right now. Uh, we, we're hoping that Steve Frazier comes around. We have Nick Donovan to come back and give us a little help. He's been around for a couple of years now. But we're still working hard trying to find that combination, trying to find that rotation, and we're ways away from that. Over the, the past couple of years, you've told me we want to become more athletic so we can play a little more up-tempo. And you're one of the best defensive teams in the country in terms of field goal percentage allowed. Now what you want to try and do is create a little more offense off those defensive stops. There's no doubt about that. We're changing our style a little bit. And it's creating some growing pains for us because now we're at, at the point where we hopefully we need to make the next step. And now we're still trying. Now we're teaching new systems, new full court presses. Uh, we, we, we're also up to, uh, creating more of an up-tempo type of running game. We're changing our half-court offense to maybe open it up and give our youngsters a little bit more freedom. Now, we've come to that there's a learning curve, and, and we know that we need to continue to keep moving in this direction, but we still have to make sure that we take the necessary steps it takes to get together. Conference going to be as competitive as always? <laughs> always. It looks like Connecticut is the, the top team in the league, along with Syracuse and, and possibly St. John's with four starters back. Uh, but just like in every year in the Big East, you never know who's going to win. And I, there's no doubt in my mind that there will be some teams that will, that are picked in the middle of the pack that will move right up to the top. And maybe yours. You win a couple of those close games, you never know. Coach Hamilton, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Frank. Good luck this basketball season. Leonard Hamilton, head basketball coach at the University of Miami. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl with halftime highlights and stats right after this here on Sports Channel. It's time. Okay, Tiger, hold on. Time to think about his future. The Equitable, a trusted partner in the U.S., AXA, a global powerhouse with $500 billion under management. AXA and Equitable, a formula for success. Equitable is a member of the global AXA group. So right now, let's look back at our AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl moment, and we will take you back to 1986. It's Minnesota, Tennessee, Minnesota on the move. This is fourth quarter action. Ricky Fogey battling his way into the end zone, spinning for a touchdown. Later, Chip Lowmiller kicked the field goal. That tied the game at 14-14. Late in the game, Jeff Francis, Joey Klinkscales, touchdown, a great grab in the end zone. That locks up a 21-14 win for Tennessee. 
the Orange Bowl with the Hurricanes leading Arkansas State 21 to 7. Frank Fort and John Jimmy with you on Sports Channel. John, the first half, Miami, the first two times they had the football, they turned it over to Arkansas State. Then the offense got in gear. Yeah, I thought Miami did a great job other than the fumble and the interception right off the bat. They've done a nice job establishing the run and then mixing in the pass and we're letting Ryan Clement go deep a couple occasions. And Larry Coker going into the playbook a little bit as the offensive coordinator in the first touchdown for the Hurricanes. Coming on a little bit of trickery as we take a look at our first half replays. Santana Moss, watch him go in motion number 48. He is eventually going to peel back around. He does a great job. Watch this. Williams has him in the backfield, but he makes Williams miss for the Indians in the backfield. Then watch the move. He has great speed on the outside. Watch him make Allen miss inside the 20. Right there. He cuts back, and now it's a foot race to the end zone. Moss wins that easily. Now, the Arkansas State Indians did bounce right back with a scoring drive of their own. They capped it off with Cleo Lemon just sneaking it over. Did a great job of running the football against the Miami defense. As you said, Lemon, the quarterback, goes in for the Indian score. So the Hurricanes find themselves in a 7-7 tie midway through the first quarter, but the offense once again responds, and when in doubt, give it to number five, Edger and James, let him do his thing. You've got Superman in the backfield, let him run wild, did a great job on the counter, cutting back to the outside, and now he just uses his speed on the outside. Watch the stiff arm at the 10-yard line right here. He takes Mitchell away from his body, and he goes in for another Hurricane touchdown. 40-yard touchdown run from Edger and James, and then Ryan Clement thought he saw something deep on a second and one, from 60 yards away, finds Daryl Jones, the true freshman wideout. Great protection in the in the offensive line. Did a nice job. And then Ryan just lets it fly down the left sideline to his freshman receiver, Jones. It's a foot race that Jones wins easily. Hurricanes on the board. 21-7, Hurricanes lead it at the half. They scored on touchdowns on three of their six possessions. We'll be back with a look at the first half stats and more right after this on Sports Channel. It's Miami 21, Arkansas State 7. <laughs> Congratulations to the world champion, Florida Marlins. From all of us at Sports Channel Florida, your exclusive cable home in 1998. He was the first head coach in football history to win both a Super Bowl title and a National Collegiate Championship. He's one of only two active coaches who've led a team to two Super Bowl titles. He's one of the NFL's most successful head coaches. He's Jimmy Johnson. And every Sunday morning, the coach of the Miami Dolphins takes the hot seat on the Jimmy Johnson Show. Get into the mind of the master every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on Sports Channel and at 11.30 a.m. on NBC6. AutoNation USA presents Sunday Morning NFL, the most comprehensive coverage of Florida's three NFL franchises on Sports Channel's Sunday Morning Playbook. Get a complete preview of the day's matchups. Like the Dolphins, the Tampa Bay Bucks are hot. Really hot. What does Buffalo have to do to beat Miami? Jacksonville in the driver's seat for the playoffs. Two to AutoNation USA presents Sunday Morning NFL on Sports Channel every Sunday at 10 a.m. Sports Channel is 100% pure Florida sports. At halftime at the Orange Bowl with the Hurricanes holding a 21-7 lead over Arkansas State. Frank Ford and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel. As we take a look at the uh, first half numbers, John, the number that bounces out is 20 minutes time of possession for Arkansas State. They did what they want to in terms of shortening the game, but they got only the one touchdown. You're right. They, they did a good job of driving down the football field, running the football, but it takes a lot of time for them to get there. Miami did a great job rushing the football, 185 yards. Edger and James has 107 of those yards, but you see total yards, 284 doing a great job of balance, run and pass, and they've done a nice job defensively in the second quarter, but they have to stop Arkansas State from running the football in the second half. Run defense has to be the emphasis. Miami with 600-yard games the last two. We'll see if they can get another one. It's 21-7 Hurricanes. We'll be back with the second half kickoff right after this on Sports Channel. <laughs> Year in and year out, it's been proven that big-time players and teams come from the elite Big East Conference. Welcome to the future. Today's Miami Hurricane basketball is big-time Big East basketball at its best. Come see stars like All-American candidate Tim James and his teammates take on the best of the Big East. All at the Miami Arena, all for one low price. Miami Hurricane basketball, big-time Big East basketball. Call 1-800-GO-CANES for tickets. Where are you going to be?
It's a fact. AIDS is not over. Ready for third quarter action here at the Orange Bowl. Frank Fort, John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel. Hurricanes will kick off to start the third. George Guytan will kick it away. Chappelle Mitchell and Rodney Allen are deep. This is Mitchell on the bounce. Across the 20. And runs into Tavokius Bonner, who makes the tackle at the 30-yard line. Third special teams tackle on the day for Tavokius Bonner who left the Temple game last week with a, got his bell rung basically, is not the technical term, but that's <laughs> yeah, what we call it. it. But he's uh, had a nice game on special teams today, the backup safety out of oh, Lynette, sorry. Alabama. Usually that's the progression, Frank. You, you do a great job on special teams, and next year he'll be looking at getting a lot of playing time and either at, at weak side linebacker or in that secondary. As we begin the second half, and Miami holding the two touchdown lead, Austin Tinsley is the tailback. Jason Alcorn, the fullback behind Cleo Lemon. play fake. Rush coming. Popovich missed him on the safety blitz. Lemon throwing for his tight end and overthrows Teeth. Well, Jeff Popovich had a shot on the safety blitz but could not bring down Cleo Lemon. Yeah, he was in the right spot, had a nice line of keeping the quarterback inside the pocket. Just didn't come down with the tackle and just going to have to make a couple of those plays depending on how injured Dennis Scott is. You're looking at uh, the starting strong safety hopefully going into next week's ball game. You'll see Jeff Popovich play a lot in this game and then maybe a lot down the stretch. He did a good job, Frank. Coming from the outside, you called it on a strong safety blitz from the wide side. That's his job. He needs to contain that quarterback. He almost did a good job of stripping the ball but didn't bring him down to the ground. Second and long. The give to Tinsley. Chad Pegues couldn't get him down. And Tinsley is going to pick up good yardage. Penalty flag down at the 33-yard line. Leonard Myers made the tackle, but again on second and long. The Hurricanes guilty of bad run defense, but I think this one's going to come back. It is going to be a holding call against Arkansas State. Just underway, third quarter, 14-36 remaining. And Miami with the two-touchdown lead. Edger and James, by the way, 10 carries for 107 yards and a touchdown, although uh, we're not sure if we're going to see him in the second half. Miami didn't want to play him a lot if they didn't have to. James Jackson has seen the bulk of the action uh, other than James at running back. And let's pick up the call. Holding, holding, offense. Ten yards, spotted a foul. Replay, second down. That'll bring it back from the 33 to the 23-yard line and bring up a second and 17. And Joe Hollis making his case. Looks like the holding call comes uh, with Matt Sweeney trying to get away and being held back by the offensive lineman. Yeah, it looked like the offensive left tackle for the Indians really had a lock on Matt Sweeney. Matt Sweeney getting his second start. Uh, he started last week against Temple, and he's played well. He did a, a bad job uh, close to halftime by taking a personal foul, but he's back in the lineup for the Canes. Lone setback is Tinsley. Lemon on a second and 17 for the Indians. Three-step drop, and now he's going to run it. Tinsley to the 28-yard line where he's piled under. Michael Smith making the tackle for the Hurricane defense. They held it to a gain of about four. Yeah, it looked like he's staying down on the ground. Cleo Lemon, number 12, the quarterback, really got his bell rung in the middle of that football field. He audible to a, a quick pass, a three-step drop, and Miami did a good job. You'll take a look. He'll take a three-step drop. Want to throw a quick hitch to the outside. Everybody's covered, so he tucks it and runs. Now take a look right here. He just lowers his head in the middle of the football field, but he's got four Miami defenders. You see number 94, Chad Pegues, along with a couple other guys, and Joe Hollis will come trot out to the uh, middle of the football field to take a look at his quarterback. Looked like he caught a Leonard Meyer shoulder right in the head, right in the temple. And so while they attend to Cleo Lemon, the backup quarterback is Jeremy Watkins, number 13. And look at the first half individual leaders. Tinsley with a nice job, 16 carries, 64 yards. Edger and James, 10 for 107. Darrell Jones, the 60-yard catch, and the quarterback numbers at the bottom. Lemon being uh, taken off the field and walking a bit gingerly. Tinsley's done a nice job at the running back spot. If he's the third-team tailback, he's done a great job of showing some power on the inside, really running the football effectively against this Miami defensive front. Third down and 12. Number 15, Brent Pettis, is the quarterback. He is the holder on all the placement kicks, and now Pettis will see some action. Comes in on a third and 12 from the 28-yard line of the Indians. Oh, 
blitz coming. Michael Smith after Pettis, knocked the ball loose. And I believe Arkansas State got it back. Give Michael Smith credit for the sack and the forced fumble, but the Indians do recover it. Tinsley, Austin Tinsley, the tailback, got on the football, but it will bring up a punting situation. Smith does a great job using his speed from that linebacker position. You see him lined up on the outside. Now, a tailback uh, uh, has to come up and meet him. He whips. He actually fans on the block, and then Smith goes to get the quarterback, Pettis, hits him from behind, causes a force a fumble, but unfortunately for the Hurricanes, they don't recover. Scott Simons back at his own 10-yard line. Dwayne Starks back to receive. Looks like Miami's going to come after it. Simons gets it away. Pretty good kick. Starks at his 32. Looking for some blocks. Gets a big one from Leonard Myers. Dwayne starts to the 50 and hauled down in Arkansas State territory. Number 25, Brown. The backup safety, Andre Brown, making the tackle. Dwayne Starks with a 22-yard return on a 42-yard punt and a great block by Leonard Myers. Yeah, Starks bobbles the football, but that allowed Leonard Myers to come down and lay a terrific block on an Indian special team player. Take a look at the middle of your field. You'll see Dwayne Starks. He's had great success on punt returns. Just bobbles it. That makes everybody freeze for a second. Then he buys some time. There's the block right there. Leonard Myers comes back. A freshman cornerback does a nice job on special teams for the Hurricanes. On first down at the 46. Edger and James back in the ball game and has the football. James to the 40. And dragged down by Sean Mitchell along with help from Coder Little. But a nice gain on first down, picked up seven. And joining us in the booth is uh, Ted Hendricks, the Hall of Famer from the NFL. I was there for your induction in Canton. Good to see you. Today inducted into the Ring of Honor here at the Orange Bowl. Must be a nice thrill, Ted. Yes, it is. It's a great recognition for the uh, players that have their uh, numbers retired. One of four guys, Jim Dooley, Ted Hendricks, George Myra, and Vinny Testaverde. We'll get back to Ted after this play. It's a second and three. Hurricanes and timeout on the field. So we'll continue our discussion with Ted. Uh, I know you played here at University of Miami, and, and you had a great career here. I know you don't get back very often. What do you see as the state of the program right now? They've been struggling this year with the sanctions. Do you feel they can get back? Well, I was at the first practice, and uh, I was asked to uh, give a uh, pep talk to them, and uh, I said a few words, and uh, I guess I won't do it again because they're <laughs> looking to be national contenders this year. We'll, we'll, we'll get Seems back. like some injuries. Okay, go ahead. We're going to get back to you in just a moment. Ted. We're going to take a break here with 12.57 left to go third quarter. Miami leading Arkansas State 21-7. We'll be right back on Sports Channel. Check it out. Look at this. There she is at six months. Okay. That's her with Daddy at the beach. Beach. She's having a checkup. Mm. Checkup. Oh. Here's a big bag. It's her first meal. Whoa. Yeah, check out those hubcaps. <laughs> Isn't she a beauty? Oh. You got videos of that one. Really? You want to see? Sure, money was part of it, but that wasn't the only reason. Office Depot takes the worry out of buying office supplies. We shopped other stores, but Office Depot had more brands, bigger inventory, and guaranteed low prices. With next day delivery, we can place our order by phone, right from the catalog. There's no reason to go anywhere else. Office Depot, still the biggest, still the best. Still taking care of business, one customer at a time. Taking care of business. Office Depot. Back at the Orange Bowl, and also regaining, restoring our conversation here with Ted Hendricks. And, uh, Ted, this has been a, do you think this has been a long time coming? Butch Davis had this idea. He coached at Dallas. They had the Ring of Honor. Is this something that is needed in a football program to honor past players? I feel that it is. Uh, they really didn't have a chance to retire any more numbers because they were going to run out of uh, digits. <laughs> With all the great players that have been past, through here the past 20 years, they would uh, have to go into triple figures. On second and three, give to Edger and James. Nice hole. He's gone. James to the 30, to the 20. James inside the 10, Edger and James, touchdown Miami. Edger and James with a 39-yard touchdown, his second of the game. Ted, what's your take on, on Edger and James? Uh, he's really an outstanding running back. He's got good speed, and nice moves, too. Tell yeah, you what, it's hard to bring down. Yeah, they gamble. Arkansas State comes with a blitz, and there's only one man to beat. Sometimes when you get in that secondary and you're blitzing on defense, if you pop the, the back into the uh, defensive backfield, somebody has to make a play. That time, Edrin just sneaks into the end zone for the Hurricane touchdown. 
Hedger and James, the sophomore out of Immokalee, Florida, his fourth 100-yard game this year. Andy Crossland's extra point is good, and with 12 minutes and 50 seconds left to go third quarter, Miami has jumped out to a three-touchdown lead, a two-play, 46-yard drive, consuming only 15 seconds. It's Miami 28, Arkansas State 7. We'll return with more third-quarter action at the Orange Bowl right after this on Sports Channel. All right, come on. What job did you get? Uh, administrative assistant. You, you're a secretary. No. My assistant executive vice president. Right. You're his secretary. Uh, no. So, what, what do you do all day? Type file, type calls. Calls? Secretary stuff. I am not a secretary. Grab me a beer. Get us yourself. Performance. It's my job. You need the right technology. You need the right skills. You need the right equipment. You need the right gasoline. And you need the right motor oil. You need to use your nine iron. Good thing he can drive. Sit go, says. Go. On Saturdays, your customers can receive two-day packages from FedEx. Cost? An extra $10. On Saturdays, your customers can receive two to three day priority mail packages from the U.S. Postal Service. Cost, $3, and there's no extra charge. On Saturdays, your customers cannot receive two day packages from UPS. Sorry. So, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. A look at Edger and James with the 41 yard touchdown run, a two minutes and 10 seconds into the third quarter. One more look at the touchdown by Edger and James. Yeah, it was an all-out blitz by the Indian defense, and Miami catches them in a perfect scenario. They get a good job of getting a, a body on a body up front. The Miami offensive line springs them into the secondary. Now it's all it's a foot race down the Miami sideline. Edger and James ends up winning most of these. He just stretches the ball over the front pylon for the Hurricane touchdown. And we'll get back with uh, Ted Hendricks right after this kickoff from George Gaetan, Waldell Harp. And Chappelle Mitchell back to receive it. This is Harp at the six. Got away from Wilbur Valdez. Fumble. Fumbled the football. See who has it. The back judge trying to work his way into the pile. It looked like Miami came up with the football, Frank, on the bottom of that pile. <laughs> and they're trying to unpile him. Miami signals Miami ball. And it's Jeff Popovich who comes away with it. So the turnover gives it back to the Hurricanes. Yeah, Ted, you got to be happy. You might bring in good luck. You gave a pep talk in the beginning of the season, but they're coming out and playing tough today. You see a football uh, on, the, on the field here on special teams, and Jeff Popovich comes up with the tackle. But I have to ask you, when you played, and, and now when you're looking at these young kids in college, really the size and speed of the guys on the football field, is it that much of a difference now compared to then? It sure is. Faster and bigger. Yeah, it, se it seems like the guys that played your particular position now, it just seems like everybody runs 4-4, four, four and they're 250 and 60 pounds. That's correct. First down, Scott Covington into the ball game as Miami has it at the 20. James Jackson trying to get to the outside. LaBelle Alexander holds it to a gain of three. Well, I know one thing. The Mad Stork could still be a good-sized player today. Ted Hendricks, thanks so much for being with us. NFL Thank Hall of Famer and now in Miami's Ring Thank of Honor you, here Thank at the you. Orange Bowl. Ted Hendricks. Man down on the field for Arkansas State on the near sideline at about the 17-yard line. We will check out the injury. It is number 58, it appears to be. Sagoon Ajibeta, the middle linebacker out of Atlanta. They call him the goon or the big goon. That's his nickname. And uh, with 12.25 left to go third quarter, uh, Scott Covington coming in on this series as Miami forced the fumble on the kickoff, the second turnover they forced today. And Jeff Popovich came up with it. So Miami trying to really punch it in and put uh, Arkansas State away. Let's take a look at the end of this run, see if we can pick up the injury. Yeah, middle linebacker just coming, number 58. You see right there, looked like one of his own guys knocked him into the ball carrier, Jackson, on the ground and really injured his, his leg. Yeah, we got rolled up by his own player. Yeah, from yeah. behind, he actually was pushed into the helmet of James Jackson on the ground. It looks like his, he's walking gingerly on that ankle or, or right knee. Sagoon, Aju Beta, 6'2", 215, freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. 58 tackles this year, three for loss, a sack and a fumble recovery coming in. 
So Miami with a chance to really uh, put the dagger in a little further on Arkansas State after this turnover. Nick Williams and James Jackson are the running backs with Scott Covington, the quarterback, as Ajibeta you see walking off rather gingerly. Well, Frank, you talk about how before halftime it took a long time for Arkansas State to score. Miami scoring drives two of them tonight under 20 seconds, 13 seconds and 15 seconds as we take a look at Scott's numbers on the season. 246 yards. He's yet to throw a touchdown. That may change tonight. Ian Wallace, number 40, replacing Ajibeta at middle linebacker for Arkansas State. Canes go with a double tight end, both on the right side of the formation. They counter the other way to Jackson. Going behind the Nick Williams block. Jackson inside the five. James Jackson out at the one. They mark him out at the one-yard line. Well, the strength of the formation was right with the double tight. They ran the counter play the other way. Yeah, did a great job for 16 yards going off the left side. That's where you see the difference. Edger and James looks like he's got the speed once he gets to the outside, but James Jackson has it right from jump street. Takes a couple steps back on the counter to let his fullback clear. You see Nick Williams trying to push the, the defender of the Indians outside. Now it's just a foot race, and let's see if he sneaks in. I don't know. It might have stepped out just shy of the pylon. They did call him out of bounds, but a nice job of acceleration getting outside by James Jackson, the Hurricane running back. Sean Mitchell saved the touchdown for the moment. Covington over the top. Signal is touchdown. Scott Covington scoring his first touchdown of the year, and Miami has increased their lead to 34-7. I thought he may get it thrown before running, but Scott shows some vertical leap that time out of the quarterback position. He goes in for, on the quarterback sneak, and that gets a smile out of him. I guess guys will be ribbing him on the sidelines for that one. Yeah, but. I mean, it, let's put it this way. He wouldn't have cleared a <laughs> high wait hurdle. A but now, he, wait, let's take a look, Frank. Let's see how, look at this. Great athletic uh, ability not by bad, a quarterback. Not bad. He went over top of the pile. There you go. Good I'm job. I'm not sure that ball got in I know. He that was, angle. He was met very well by the defense, but he did get, get credited with the touchdown. And flags down on the extra point. You know, John, I want to bring up something that we were talking about before we went on the air, as the penalty will be probably a false start against Miami. Right to the snap. False start. Miami has had to take Offense. timeouts on Five extra yards. points Replay once in each point of the last two games. Once against Boston College, once against Temple, and it's been the same player. Now, without ragging on this particular player, it's a, it's a senior who his playing time has decreased. You don't think that extra points are that important. That may be his attitude. Well, you look at the Pitt-Rutgers game last week. There were six extra points missed. The game had to go to triple overtime because of those misses. Any one of those six, simple execution of the extra point, and that ball game is over, and Rutgers has a win, or Pitt has a win in regulation. I, I can't agree with you more. I mean, it's underestimated the importance of special teams and, and extra points, but I guarantee you a lot of those, both those coaches didn't have hair because they're pulling it out on the sideline. You see the scoring drive, only three plays. This is the third time Miami has taken under a minute to score tonight. This time, it takes 32 seconds, and Scott Covington goes in from the one-yard line. Just for the record, Andy Crossland's extra point, as you saw, was good and Crossland who has missed two this year has converted all five today he's now 24 out of 26 on the season trying to keep the momentum going Boston College the Canes racked up 45 points in the double overtime game 47 against Temple 40 point favorites today right now they're up 28 at 35 to 7 and they had 185 yards rushing at halftime they're up over 200 now and if they do get to the 300 mark, it would be the first time in school history that they've had three consecutive 300-yard rushing games. Well, they may have a chance to do that because I don't see Miami really putting the ball in the air a lot uh, in this second half, Frank. Well, we bring you Hurricane football here on Sports Channel. And Hurricane fans, you can catch the Canes again next Saturday night at 1130 when they take on the Hokies of Virginia Tech. See the Canes as they try to stay in the race for the Big East Championship next Saturday at 1130. That's right here on Sports Channel. Rodney Allen, Chappelle Mitchell back to receive the George Gaitan kickoff with 12.07 left to go third quarter. And Gaitan's had a busy day kicking off. Five touchdowns and the kickoff to start the second half. The walk-on out of Coral Gables High School. And he struggled some this year. Miami special teams described by Butch Davis is just average. Yeah, they haven't blocked a number of kicks, but they haven't been forcing teams to punt as often as they have in the past. And that's, that's a thing. big change, though, Frank. Last year and the year before in 95, especially when Butch took over, that was the one improvement I thought. Special teams was clearly a, 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 a team that you can depend on for an immediate change of momentum and pace, and they haven't done that yet this season. Line drive kick taken on a bounce by Rodney Allen. Allen trying to get to the outside. Got around Wilbur Valdez and then hauled down at the 21-yard line. Carlos Garcia and Robert Williams combining on the special teams tackle, number 60 and number 80 for the Hurricanes. And they'll start at the 21, Will Arkansas State, and it looks like Mr. Lemon has returned to the lineup. 
Yeah, they didn't squeeze all the juice out of that lemon. He's coming back. Into I the knew ball that was game. coming at some point. You've been saving that up for a half and uh, part of this third. I point. thought I saw you pucker, so I might as well use it first. First and ten from the Arkansas State 21. Tinsley, Austin Tinsley. Picks up close to five. Quincy Hips on the tackle, along with Michael Lawson in the Hurricane Interior defensive line. Frank, I think it's a good part point in the game. Miami's up 35 to seven. This is a great chance to look at the defensive run stop, see if they can improve and find things on the sidelines that they can improve on to really go into next week's ball game because they're going to face a terrific run game. And it may be cold, it may be a bad weather game. They're going to face uh, the ball on the ground a lot next week. So now they can build, find something to build on and work towards in next week's ball game. Second and five for the Indians. Ball at their 25. Lemon swings it out to Tinsley. Tinsley gets away from James Sutton, who did trip him up, and he gets close to first down yardage right at the 31-yard line. And he should have the first down, Austin Tinsley, the senior out of Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Came into the game with 34 carries for 84 yards, and he's up close to that uh, 70 mark right now. Yeah, nice job by Cleo Lemon coming back into the ball game after getting rattled on the last series. Look downfield, everyone was covered, just dumps it off to Tinsley in the flat. You see James Sutton getting his eighth tackle on the season, but did a nice job of just dumping it off and let the guys around him work for the first down. From the 31, first and 10. Tinsley again, trying to pick a hole and none is there. James Sutton, Nate Webster, Michael Lawson all getting in on the tackle. We have 10.39 left to go third quarter. A good look at Nate Webster, the freshman out of Miami Northwestern High School. And a guy who has been a Hurricane fan all his life. We were commenting before the game. He better not change his number because he's got 50, 52 with the UM tattooed on his uh, left right. bicep. So uh, no number changes for Nate Webster, I don't think. No, he's going to have to plead with somebody. Hey, listen, I, this is my number. I prove it right here. Show me a bicep. Call it a loss of a yard on the play, second and 11. Double wide receiver to the bottom of your screen, Westbrook and Lenny Johnson. Lemon passes outside, incomplete. Going for Jockeys Walker and Quincy Hips, the defensive end, came off in the flat to provide the coverage. Yeah, Quincy peels off of the pass rush that time and runs out into the flat, did a nice job. He showed some speed for a big guy out there. Quincy goes at 6'4", 255 pounds, but he's got fresh legs. He's only a freshman, doing a good job on the outside perimeter for the defense of Miami. Well, Quincy's forte is quickness. He's, he's not yet a physical defensive end, and he's not as strong as he needs to be yet, but he is very quick. Third down and 11 for the Indians from their 31-yard line. Leo Lemon, the quarterback, the freshman. Straight drop. Blitz coming from Michael Smith. Lemon overthrows his man at the 45-yard line of Miami. He was going for Westbrook, David Westbrook. And that'll bring up a punting situation for Arkansas State. Miami had the perfect coverage on that time. They had press corners and guys on the hashes at safety. They tried to throw an inside corner route up on the left side of your screen. And Cleo Lemon tried to fit the corner route in, but he had great coverage. Dwayne Starks on the on the underneath coverage. And on top, he was also covered by number, uh, looked like 24, Delvin Brown. Four punts for 39 yards for Scott Simons, who stands at his 17-yard line. Dwayne Starks back to receive for Miami at the Kane 26. Simons has to pull it down. They were on top of him. Eugene Ridgely was right in his face. Boy, Eugene Ridgely looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Looked like he came untouched, Frank. He's the starting free safety. Eugene Ridgely makes a big play on special teams for the Hurricanes. Did a nice job. Almost would have taken the ball off of the foot of the special teams punter for the Indians. Did a great job coming in and making a big play. See where he comes from. Just off the left side. He was blocked, but he was blocked almost into the kicker. Really a helpless position for the punter that time for Arkansas State. Miami special teams making a play. We were talking about him a couple minutes ago. Just being average. They may have hurt us this time. They come up with a nice turnover. So Miami has started now at the Arkansas State 46, the 20, and the 18. Covington had to pull it down. His man was covered. James wide open at the 15. Edgerin down to the 11 and the 10-yard line, and that's where they stop him. Rodney Allen and Sean Mitchell combining on the tackle. 
Yeah, Scott Covington was looking to go outside with the ball and then had to pull it down as the receiver was covered. Yeah, he wanted to go to Reggie Wayne. It looked like he wanted Reggie to go on a quick quick slant or a quick hitch and then go. The coverage dictated that. They were on the different page, so Scott came out and did a nice job of finding Edron James in the flat. Did a nice job of moving the pocket. He flushed right, so he threw right, and, and Edron did a good job of advancing the football. And Reggie Wayne has uh, not caught a pass today. Covington gives it to James, who falls in the backfield trying to make his cut and will lose almost three. Reggie Wayne hasn't caught a pass, and I don't believe Daniel Franks has caught a pass either, the Canes' two leading receivers. Yeah, Daniel, last week, the emergence of the tight end position, he had five catches for 110 yards and a touchdown, and tonight, having a difficult time getting the ball to Reggie Wayne. He's only a freshman, but he has 32 catches on the season for 413 yards and a touchdown, so really want to try to work those two guys into this ball game. You're not going to want to throw the football a lot, but if you do, you want to look at 18, 88, or 87. Wayne split to the bottom of your screen. And a, a Covington fumbled the football. And Arkansas State has it. Just a sloppy exchange. Coder Little comes up with it, number 43. And the turnover gives it back to Arkansas State. Third turnover of the game for Miami. Yeah, take a look at Butch talking to Art Kehoe. It might have been a center quarterback exchange type of, of situation where he never got the ball from the center. And it looked like the center was going one way and Scott was reverse pivoting out from the center. It looked like a good snap, but it's hard to tell. It was going to be a counter play with the guard coming from left to right. So Scott needs to get out of there fairly quick. And it looked like a backup center in at that time, Eric Schnupp, number 55. So they haven't worked a lot together. Eric's usually at the guard position. No, they have not. 8.26 left to go, third quarter. Miami up 35-7. to seven. Lemon with Tinsley and Jockeys Walker behind him. Play fake. Lemon got away from Brian Stinson. Lemon still with the football. Still on his feet. Finally forced out at the 15-yard line by Michael Smith. Brian Stinson had a great chance at a sack. And... Uh, this is coach speak, but you've got to make that play. Yeah, they've had a couple chances. The Miami defense have had a couple chances of getting Arkansas State quarterbacks or running backs in the backfield, and they have not come up with the big play. We'll take another look at that at that play right there. Stinson coming from the outside did a great job of just bull rushing on the outside using his power, but Lemon just shakes him off of his back and then tries to make a big play on the outside, but he ran out of real estate. Miami forces him out of bounds. And Denny Fortney comes off holding his left hamstring. They're checking him out. Dennis Scott already gone, and Dan Morgan has the shoulder pads off, although his injury does not appear to be real serious. And they're going to check Fortney out. Draw play to Tinsley. Tinsley lowers his head, gets to the 20-yard line. Nate Brooks on the tackle for Miami, along with Cliff Jackson. Gain of five. It'll bring up a third and about three and a half. Nate Brooks did an excellent job of beating David Westbrook, the wide receiver, to the point, to the spot where the football was going to go. He was trying to block downfield, but you'll see a blur, and that blur is number two coming from the right from the TV screen right here, right there. He did a great job of coming up from the cornerback spot to make a big hit on the tailback, Tinsley. 7.43 left to go, third quarter. Jacquees Walker is the lone running back behind Cleo Lemon. Johnson in motion. Lemon three-step drop. Pass complete to Cockrell, and he has a first down up at the 33-yard line. 